Mm-hmm. All set? Okay. All right, let's try that again. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Ware Board Selectmen. We started at 6.30 with a uh, non-public meet with a police candidate, and then we had a non-public with the um, DPW director. So that brings us to 6 past the hour. We'll have Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment. Hello, Kyle Parker, uh, old Francis Down Road. I had the opportunity to listen to the meetings on February 6th and April 6th regarding a property 706 Reservoir Drive, um, which was brought up at both meetings by Mr. Cahill. Um, this appeared to be the action of one board member, but since at the last meeting it was mentioned that the town attorney was contacted, I thought that I should show up. Um, he expressed his concern regarding his perceived uh, non-permitted and non-inspected electrical work at that property. He asserted that it was keeping him up over the safety of an infant in the home because of overload on the electrical system. I'm not sure if you're aware uh, at this point, but my wife and I had purchased that property at auction three years ago, sold it two years ago. Um, several curious uh, discrepancies existed in Mr. Cahill's assertions. I have no fingernails here, so excuse me. Failed to be mentioned uh, at those meetings was that that property was owned by um, Kevin Cahill's wife's grandmother. Um, and after I had uh, got the house on the auction, he expressed his complete displeasure to me about how his sister who wanted to buy the house back didn't get that house and that he would be keeping close watch on me um, with regard to what I was doing on the house. Also not mentioned, while it was curious that you know the electrical work was noticed, um, there's a current addition that was put on since the new homeowner bought that house. Um, there's no permit for that addition. Now I'm not here to cause the new homeowner grief, I'm just here to point out that the, the curiosity in all this. Um, I'm here to say that the inquiry into this is not only unfounded, it stinks of malice and malfeasance on Mr. Cahill's part. Um, and certainly a simple phone call to me could have averted all of this. It was also mentioned that, like I said, the town attorney was contacted and um, I would suggest that, you know, if it's going to be pursued, that maybe you guys look into getting the <coughs> New York City DA that's prosecuting Trump because this is the sort of case that this would be. Um, I guess that's about it. I look forward to seeing where the board takes this because it'll determine the action that I'll be taking. Thank you. Thank you, Frank Campana. I'll try to make it in my five minutes. Uh, my comment centers around um, your, your last uh, your last meeting. Uh, there was a work session, and um, Sergeant Juan Pleasures, um, uh, the change of the use of the grant, I guess, from the Attorney General's office, uh, it was previously supposed to be, for <coughs> excuse me, for uh, um, drone and a UTV. Uh, so the change is for a command car. Uh, I, I watched it that night, and then I watched it, the YouTube off and on. Uh, there are a few points I'd like to bring out, and um, not, not necessarily concerns, but well, I guess concerns. Uh, Sergeant Juan Pleasure uh, uh, asked for the change to a command car. Uh, Sergeant Juan Pleasure uh, me almost immediately said, may not need public hearing, not really a controversial, controversial subject. Uh, my impression of that was uh, uh, that Sergeant Mon Pleasure was telling you as a board that uh, you don't need a public hearing. 
where you, uh, uh, the, uh, it's an attempt to eliminate public from the process. Uh, the board rightfully uh, had agreed to a public hearing for the drone and UTO, U, UTV. Um, Sergeant Frizzy spoke. Uh, Chief's primary drive for the people to pass on, uh, it, it, the car was, it, it's the Chief's primary drive uh, and for the, <coughs> for the people to pass on it would be irrational. Uh, the board, uh, make no mistake, uh, that uh, this vehicle uh, is used as the Chief's personal ride um, uh, and uh, I, I, I will reference the 2020 uh, minutes from the deliberative session. Uh, uh, Selectman Meany, uh, the article, there, there were two cars pr proposed that year, two Tahoes. One was a frontline car and the other one was, a, you know, uh, the other car. Uh, uh, Selectman Meany spoke to the article. Um, uh, the second, uh, this, this is the second half of the police cruises. Uh, he noted um, the vehicle would be used to replace the chief's vehicle for his transportation. Uh, there was also discussion, uh, the question was asked by a board member last week, uh, the longevity of the car. Uh, and Sergeant Mont Pleasure said uh, 10 years. Well, that's, that may be true, but uh, the same minutes from that uh, 2020, Mr. Campana inquired the life expectant expectancy of the chief's vehicle. It had already been established it was the chief's car. Chief Moore, uh, use it for five or six years, okay, and then it would rotate down to an ACO vehicle. <coughs> Well, we have an ACO vehicle. Maybe at that time we didn't, so maybe that was applicable. But, but the chief, uh, he, he conceives that the life expectancy should be at least 10 years depending on condition, obviously. So Mont Sergeant Montpleasure was right, you know, 10 years life expectancy, but only five or six years for the police chief. Then he wants another new car. Where will it end, folks? Uh, uh, Cahill. Uh, Selectman Cahill, uh, he acknowledged, uh, made a comment, the chief's primary drive 97% of the time. Uh, there was a little bit more to that. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pick and choose things, you know, that kind of are out of context in a sense. Uh, Sergeant Frisbee, the opportunity rep to replace the oldest vehicle in the fleet. Uh, that's true. Uh, it is an opportunity. But where are you going to use it? Sergeant Mont Pleasure, try to get a new vehicle that can be reliable. Right now, have two marked vehicles for service. Only two cars for service, you know. So here we go. Um, a rational person would question that with only two marked vehicles, uh, two marked patrol vehicles in service, why wouldn't the police chief and the Board of Selectmen request, request grant money to be used to purchase another frontline vehicle. Uh, what is the priority? To, uh, uh, is the priority to give the chief a new ride or provide service to the public? Uh, I would suggest to the board, I think it was mentioned, I couldn't get it through the YouTube, I probably missed it. Five minutes, too. Frank. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Good evening, uh, Richard Butt. I have uh, similar concerns regarding the, the vehicle. Is that still uh, in process? Is that uh, the grant? Is this? We haven't heard any update yet okay. from, from the last time. All right. Um, I, I'm more concerned about the patrol vehicles and the age of the patrol, patrol vehicles. No question it's an aged fleet over there. Um, my priority would be, uh, as a layman, uh, would be uh, patrol vehicles, not a, not a, a, a new vehicle for the police chief. I mean, I, it wouldn't bother me if, if, the, the, if the chief is driving an Explorer with uh, 250,000 miles if he's late for work. But it certainly bother me if a, if a patrol officer 
trying to get to a scene in one of the charges broke down. So um, I'd rather, if, if there's an option available to take that uh, grant money and use it for a patrol vehicle, I'd, I, I would urge the board to, uh, to move in that direction. Thanks. All right, we will move on to department head committee items. You know, we're going to reappoint a member to the zoning board. Good evening. Hey there. So zoning board again. Yep. How many terms is this? I, guess I, I should Good say, question. how many years is this at least? <laughs> okay. Heck of a long time. <laughs> why, why do it again? Why, pardon me? Why do it again? Because I, uh, I just I kind of believe in, in volunteering for the community and putting a little bit back. Okay. Um, sometimes I think I'm a sucker for punishment too, but <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> How do you think I got here? Yeah. So, okay. Does any of the board members have any questions for? I think this is your third time. Mr. Wright? At least three times. I think yeah. this is his third time okay. around. At the end of this, it'll be nine years. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anybody have any I questions? I was that old. <laughs> I didn't say that. All right, I'll, enter, I'll entertain a motion. All right, I'll uh, I'll move that uh, we appoint Malcolm Wright to the zoning board for as a full member for a three-year term. Okay. Move and second. It all in favor? Yes. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Cool. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Have a great night. All right. Uh, staffing fee update and hauler licenses. Recognize Frank. So, Frank Baker, um, so a lot of the prices have changed and a lot of uh, the tanks that we weren't able to get rid of, um, we now can. The acetylene tanks, any oxygen tanks, uh, the polypropylene tanks, basically any tank that they have, we can get rid of now. Okay. Um, Through who? And that's through the co-op. Oh, yeah. So the co-op now, even with our electronics, is going in with the electronics. They're basically working themselves in with everybody. So for the hard. most part, well, it is. It's good because it makes my job a lot easier. It's one phone call. Sure. It's one phone call. They take the batteries now. They give us 20 cents a pound for them. Um, so they also hitch us up, so there is no longer a charge for mercury devices. We have a company that will take them for free now. Um, they send us a box, shipping label on it, and it goes. So, uh, and everything is cut back. We used to, some of the things, we used to have 50 to 100 of them before we could get rid of them. It's not now. If we have 100 one-pound propane tanks, it doesn't matter how many 20 pounders or anything else. We can get rid of them. Okay. And the price difference is huge. We were paying $20 for the 100 pounders. It's $2.25 now. Oh. Yeah. So. Um, so with the fee update, are you looking to change what we have on the books now? So I have okay. everybody a copy of it okay. um, of what the changes should be and stuff and I think like I said some of them they charge 225 I think all around mm -hmm. it evens everything all out but most <coughs> of the prices have gone down uh, we were paying a hundred dollars for a tractor tire if we took them right so they charge us sixty dollars right now to take them and they're supposed to go down to forty dollars on the big tractor tires you still gonna so you're gonna try to take them again I am take I are. I have been taking them okay, again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why me learning the job, whether I'm supposed to do it now or not, I have been. Mm -hmm. I've been taking them because everybody's cleaning their yards. I'm not going to say no. Yep. And now we have an automatic pickup every two weeks for tires to come in. 
We have an automatic refrigeration every two weeks. It doesn't matter how many we have now. If we've got 10, they'll take 10. If we've got 50, they'll take 50. It doesn't matter. They'll empty them. Good. Yeah. So it's all going to be setting it up so it's all automatic pickup so that sometimes I don't have to get on the phone because I already know on my calendar that when they're, they're going to be there. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a look. Um, you know, again, it, this is the this is the in and out account. This is, you know, we, we're paying to get rid of this stuff, so it should be close to accurate. We're not looking to make a profit off it. We're just looking to dispose of it and dispose of it properly. Well, it is, like I said, and, and that is that is what it is. If it's, if it's 225 then something else, you, you're going to charge a little so it all evens out so you're not making any. Right. You're just breaking even. Just a pass through. Yeah. So, yeah, Would we'll you take like a Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. And the, the, the biggest changes here are obviously the is everything the the new stuff that we can take that we couldn't take before. Yep. Like the dry cell batteries. Yep. We couldn't before we can now it's a dollar a pound to get rid of them so that is people are bringing in your solar solar batteries and stuff those are dry cell batteries yeah okay or some of your cars now have your dry cell batteries in them okay. so we can get rid of them um are you still getting money for 20 pound tanks what's that are you still getting money for 20 pound propane tanks are we still charging yeah are you so still we, are you still getting paid on the other end for them Oh, I don't know. That I don't know. I've got to look into. Um, so it's like the paper, too, now, is we were getting paid for paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew it took a drop a little bit. It, well, there is no market for it, right. so we're paying about $800, 860 a trailer to get yep. rid of it yep. right now and stuff. So they send me, and I mean, I can send it over, they send me a list every month of what we're getting charged for everything. Mm -hmm so that I can kind of keep track and look somewhere else if, right. if we have to. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I, and I forgot, is um, you wrote it, I believe, Benji, is the recycler that is on the web page. Yeah, probably. Huh? Probably. <laughs> so I've gone through it and updated prices yep. and things that have changed and stuff that it's mandatory and recycling and stuff, mm -hmm. and that we really are going to start reinforcing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's about it for me. Okay. What about your refrigeration, you know, refrigerators so, and coolant, air conditioners, that kind of stuff? That's right. So that's what I was talking about. Your refrigeration and stuff, all of that until they start now. So refrigeration and stuff. We're paying twelve dollars right now. That's actually going down to eight dollars when they start. So with, with that co-op deal, with the, with the co-op working them, well, you can call it a co-op deal, but they're getting in with everybody. They're working with everybody because it's good for them, mm -hmm. and let's face it, it's good for us. So all the prices. I mean, like I said, the hundred-pound tanks from twenty dollars down to down yeah. to two dollars and twenty-five cents is what is what we're paying and stuff or the refrigeration mm -hmm. we're paying twelve dollars down to eight dollars i mean that's mm -hmm. no it's that's good so okay so um, when were you hoping to make these changes as soon as possible we had to have a public hearing we have right? to have public hearing right do you okay yeah okay yeah because it's fine it's a fee schedule we got to change that's all so a lot of this some of the tanks have already been there for yeah ever so i'm just looking to get rid of everything that's there. They're coming in this week and they're taking everything. Well, that, and that's, yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine I mean, with that. We, just get out of there. I mean, I should have, but I just figured if the place is empty and everything is gone, then we're starting all anew. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and cleaned up. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm 100% with that. Okay. So if somebody yeah. brings a propane tank in, one of the little 20 pound tanks from their grill? From their grill, it's $3. Yeah, yeah. They can they can bring in in whatever size they want. 
the, the different change now that it's going to be with the co-op is that we're paying a little less and you, it's no different price from a five pounder to a hundred pounder. And anywhere in between. And yeah, anywhere between there. Yep. It's still the same price. Okay. I mean, your one pounder still stay at a dollar. Yeah. And then your hundred pounders are their yep. own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, right. yeah, I think we'll, uh, I think we can definitely put that together. Okay. It's going to be a little bit, but we can okay. put it together. All right. So, any other board members have any questions? Uh, styrofoam. Are you going to start separating styrofoam out? Because I've seen a couple of towns that are doing that now. I can ask, but as far as I know, there's no market for styrofoam. And for what it weighs? Yeah, I know. I know it's that. It's yeah. just that it wouldn't be going into landfill or yeah. into... Well, it's, it's it, I mean, up, I guess. and I do understand that, well, so your styrofoam really is, and, and talk about it, it's really going to energy. I mean, let's face it, it's, it it's they're, they're burning it yeah. for yeah. electricity. Yeah. It's petroleum. So, I mean, it's, and, and I'll go back to the paper a little bit. It's no different. Yeah, you know, we're paying a little bit for the paper, but it's half the price of what we're paying for trash. Right, right. So, and, and it's got weight to it. Yeah, it's so. Yeah. It it's That's got right. way to it. Yeah. So that, that would definitely drive our hauling fees and, and oh, yeah, yeah, tipping yeah. fees up on that. So, yeah. yeah, we can't have that. What about plastic now? Are we going to go back to plastic so, for the co-op? That's something. So as far as I'm, and, and that's not my decision. I mean, that's, so I've talked to them about the plastic. Um, so now they have a new plan that you're not separating it as much. It's one through seven. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Good. And you, the only thing you can't put in there is black plastic and five-gallon buckets. Okay. Good. So, and the last time you guys did plastic, it was paying two cents a pound. It's paying four cents a pound. Now. For one through seven. What's that? For one through one seven. Yeah, one through seven. Okay. That's right. So that's basically all of it. Yeah. Everything. So it sounds like so, that. It sounds so, like it's still in so the So it is so. viable, but I mean... Yeah. Well, I said I was, weren't going to do it again until you could get one through seven because the labor is so much less than separating. Oh, yeah. I, and, and let's face it, the way things been all. for five or six months, I can't do it on, there's no way that I, I can do it myself. So is that is that number solid right now or is that still being that finalized? That number solid right now, but the way I'm looking at it, to, in all honesty, I'm looking at it, and I mean there's a lot of good stuff the co-op's doing and stuff, but I'd rather wait a few months and just make sure that it's going to stay there because it's so fresh. Let's face, yeah. let's face it, you're either in it or you're not. Right. And you got to go in at 100 percent to do it and yeah. stick with it. And yeah, the thing is, we, all, need, we need the staffing down there first. The you know, only way I'd be, you know, <laughs> you, your guys' decision, you want to do it or not. The only way I was yeah. ever in favor of it was to be able to do one through sevens. Yeah. And be full staffed. Yeah. yeah, well, that's, that's my argument. You know, to, to do ones and do twos, you've got to have two and a half trailer loads you got to store. You're not really recycling. This whole 100% recycling so, thing's been thrown out there. You're not recycling at all. So, in the last time you got rid of ones through sevens up there, you paid half a penny a pound to dispose of it. Right. Yeah. So, so with a lot so of labor to do it. So, that is the other issue, is in the only nice part. Some of you don't know, is we put that other storage trailer there. Mm -hmm. We're going to need that other storage trailer because, let's face it, the plastic's got to be kept underneath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's got to get wet. Stored. It's got to be stored. Yeah. It's, it has to be stored. Yeah. It has to be stored. Okay. The only nice part about everything now, everybody, they tell me that cardboard and stuff and everything else is down, but I have to tell you, I call a co-op, and they say, oh, well, it'll be two weeks. It's never been two weeks. Two days later, I've got a truck there picking up the picking cardboard up or whatever. So it's all going quick enough. <laughs> and I just got an email uh, today from them that it, everything is picking up. Okay. There's new plants opening across the country and stuff. Fuel's Tennessee. going down. Huh? Fuel's going down, so. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so. Oh, it comes to plastic. It, you, you guys' recommendation, if you want to yeah. report, report that. back. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I, it's I, staffing. We, we got to go to back to it at some point. There's, there's no question about it. It's just yeah. when it, when it. Just it, the time has to be right to implement it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I need, agree. I need the full time staff to be able to. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Because, basically, that in the cardboard is. Is enough. Is enough for one person. Right. So. Okay. Can you want to give a date yeah. before he walks away? 
Yeah, I mean, we can have, I mean, I'm not thinking. You don't have time to give 14 days for May 1st. No. So, so it, May 15th? That's fine. Yeah, May 15th. What's that? That will be the public hearing. Okay. Well, it's on the list we charged anyway, so we're not going to go in a hole on it. No. No. Okay. But it still has to be public hearing. Right. Like okay. Said, so. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, we just don't want to lose sight of it. That's all. Yeah. No. Just make sure you're comfortable with the prices. Ask yeah. and look one more time. I, well, well. well, that's why I've actually sat on this list for three or four weeks. <laughs> just and I talk sure. to them every other day. Yep. Okay. Just because I want to know. Yep. Okay. Good. Good. So. So given another month, I mean, you say you were waiting on like the one through seven plastic. Mm -hmm. So if we say we're not going to meet for another really over month now, would you be? That's fine. Is that enough time then See, to say like, let's so, make So what I'm saying with the plastic the is I can't, I'm the only full-time one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah we, we need staffing. Yeah, you you need a, staff a, before a, I can do anything else. But, but it I is. Mean, still, I want to get the place. But the way I'm understanding it is, and, and I just want to clarify it, yeah. is the one through seven through the co-op is new. It is very that's right. new. That's right. So yeah. another month or two. That's new within the last give three us some weeks. Give some time to, to, for the program to settle in, yep. and then You'll we can implement it. Do. And then we can implement it. And if, the nice part, if we get the staffing. Yeah. Really, for you guys, if you want, is you guys can all call Bonnie and she'll talk to you. Yeah. She'll yeah. tell you anything you want to know. Yeah. So. Okay. No, as long as you're all set, this till we yeah. have a public hearing, we're yeah. not going to go in the yeah. hole yeah. on yeah. it. So. Okay. Go in the hole. Good yeah. enough. All right. For once. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Frank. I appreciate it. Yeah. Parks and Rec. That's all I have is just you and Parks and Rec, so we don't know what you're here for. Thank kind you. of. Why to my email a little late? Kind of, anyways. It's that season. It is. The going to open. Oh. So we have recommendations for our... Um, first part of the summer schedule and recommendations for 2023 fees. Thank you. Thank you. So at our last meeting, mm -hmm. this is what Thank the you. board. Okay. <coughs> I printed them all too, so Beth and I must have printed them together. Oh, she did. Yeah. Well, if anybody in the audience. Janine Lynch, Parks and Rec. So we'll start with the hours, it's the easiest. So we're looking at um, opening day, May 27th, so it's a Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. And we will be weekends only through most of June until school is out, the last day of school is the 20th. So then we'll get our full-time um, staff, as in students. So June 24th will start being seven days a week until August 27th. We're speculating school is going to start that week okay. after. Um, and then what we did last year that worked out really well that we're hoping to do this year is in August is revisit how many rain days were there, um, you know, staff calling out, where are we at with, the, um, with our budget line for, um, for the employees and then kind of cut back and just figure out how many people we need weekends only because it's just going to be weekends only and it's once school starts up it's really just some boats there's not a lot of people at the beach really too much so um, we did make a change last year we were um, weekdays 10 to 7 and then um, weekends were 9 to 8 and this year we're just looking to have every day of the week the same hours because we did have people on hot days lining up at the gate waiting at 10 to open. And so uh, just make it more streamlined so we don't have to, what day of the week is it kind of thing. So. so that's all we have. Questions, comments? Nothing concerns? on the, uh, I got nothing on the schedule. Um, okay. Is the, the fee schedule the same or has that changed as well? That has changed. Not yet. You haven't had a public hearing. Yeah, I was going to say. It's, we this have to is have our hearing. suggestions for changing. Okay. Um, so, um, the resident per day, $5 a car is the same resident per car for the season pass. We've recommended it for $20. It was $10 for at least the last six or seven years. Um, and that's the whole season for first car. Second car has been $2 again, years. Um, so we're looking at $5, uh, boat ramp was $20 a season 
for yeah. residents and we're recommending $30 a season for residents. And then the, for seniors and veterans for this year, what we, we combined them so they're going to be the same. Um, still, first car free. <coughs> um, second car will be $5, which will match um, what it is for regular residents. And then um, boat, first boat is discounted at $15 um, versus the $30 is for non-seniors or veterans. And then an additional boat is $30. Boat or jet ski is $30. And that's, so that's the same for seniors and veterans. Um, and then walk-in stays the same, $2 per person. And the other change we recommended is for non-residents for daily. We wanted to try out doing $5 per person. So we're going to be a little more competitive with Clough State Park. All ages, birth on, and um, no reentry. So this way, when you have a local husband and wife in the next town, it's, you know, it's encouraging because we've noticed our, our numbers with out of town has been continually going down. So what we're hoping it? this helps. Hmm? What was it? It was uh, $40 per car. Which a family of four, you know, it was pretty, pretty comparable to Clef, a little bit higher. Um, but now a family of four would be twenty dollars. You're walking, still not allowed. Correct for okay. for out of town, yeah. And yeah. then no reentry to kind of that, you know, don't go out yep. and get more people and come back in. And then boat ramp, non-resident stays the same, fifty dollars. Um, I don't have a problem with it. No, we, I, I like that per resident better than the. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It that, still that's discourages that's, that's, huge bus cleaner. loads. <laughs> it's cleaner. Yeah, it, it's cleaner. The five dollars per person, it's cleaner. Yeah. So, all right. Um, can we do that public hearing the same night, or is that too much? You think? Fifteenth, May fifteenth. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm cheating a little bit because it's an ex officio on part. So. Uh, no, you're we, supposed to have the intel. That's, well, that's so right. we t <laughs> I, so we talked a little bit about with the expanded hours. And pay increases, are we going to have enough budget? So do you do have an answer to that question? Um, we didn't do the, we didn't do the, we didn't sit down and do the math, um, but that's why we really like revisiting it before the fall, is do we really need to, because at that point we could, I mean, as we do state on our schedule, we can, you know, change the hours without notice. So in the fall, if we have to say, okay, that's it, it's going to be 10 o'clock, you know, to 7 or, or whatnot, we have that opportunity mm -hmm. too, so. Okay. I don't have a problem with either of them. Anybody else here? No? All right. That's, that's pretty much, unless anybody has questions for me, I mean, we're going to, planning to open the tennis courts this Saturday. Going to get the nets up. And then um, lots of improvements happening at Bolton. We have an awesome volunteer that <laughs> did some fixing up with replace, repairing on the slides and getting the sunshades up. And, and uh, so... Just kind of doing that spring upkeep spring stuff. Clean. The fields got okayed from Stockhouse to use, and we're looking at hopefully finally getting a new irrigation company. Okay. But other than that, what what's the latest with the Bolton Gate? Oh, I have one more question. Uh, so we got one estimate. We have another promised estimate, and the third they did not return our okay. call. So hopefully we. Um, hopefully within a week we'll have the second okay. quote and, and I we'll ask be able to because the chief's sitting here and yep. I put a bug in his ear about when, when that's all done if, yep so to say it into the mic if somebody could stop by no I, I'll do it <laughs> Just to, to actually get my question out if somebody could stop by as they patrol and lock, direct, the, lock the gate patrol. unlock the gate yep uh, in, uh, in the evening in the morning yep uh, and you know, obviously calls for service take priority, but we will be able to swing by at some point. It may not be at 7 p.m., right. but it'll 745, be... 745, right. you know, depending 747, on... 747, yeah. Yeah, we'll get there. Right. Okay. Yes, Thank we you. will definitely get there. And also, I would highly recommend increased fees for out-of-town residents on holidays because we see a lot of problems at Clough that could be avoided with, like, 50 bucks a car on a holiday, especially July 4th. Okay. Highly recommend that. Is that something that you want to take back to the committee? Um, yeah, I could absolutely, definitely recommend we, we, that. We have some, obviously, we have some time between the public hearing and Yeah, that, our so. next meeting is uh, second week. I think it's the 13th of May. 
I'd have to look at the calendar, second Tuesday of May. Um, so yes, absolutely, I can definitely mention that. And um, it's a good idea, 4th of July is also our hardest um, time. And, and then I have one other note too. Mm -hmm. um, I had an inquiry of an anonymous donation from a local construction company to do some of the repairs that um, I've discussed that on our laundry list. Mm -hmm. um, would I, I'm assuming if we were able to accept that just requiring their um, insurance for their company, would that be all I would, first of all, could we accept that? And second of all, what are we talking for money? Um, so it would be they want to donate base, for example, like the gazebo benches, repairing all the boards that are rotten or missing. Um, and then it would be like there's one more roof at um, Ineson on the shed that it just needs to be replaced. So eight by ten roofs. So, so they're going to be doing the work and the materials. The hundred percent donation. Mm -hmm. So it would and they wanted to stay anonymous. So that's why I was. I, I would. I would want. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm 100% proponent of it. Yep. And thank the individual. Um, but definitely insurance. Mm -hmm. I, I would say the scope of work that's going to be performed. Just written out yeah. like a bid, just $0. Similar to a bid, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That way there we also have a, a, monet have a, value. a monetary it's, value. It's over $5,000. I have to have a public hearing. Okay. But if it's under that, we can just okay. accept I don't think generous donation. Yeah. And each separate meeting. project would be acceptable, right? We could break it up for each yeah. project, different oh, yeah. locations. Because I don't, I don't see yeah. any of them going over that. And, that, and that's fine. And we can keep the, the the donor to you know obviously you know we'll review it, but we won't disclose. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think that we need to know the scope of work that's going to be performed on on town buildings. So. Absolutely. Okay. Right. I mean, it doesn't have, to, and it doesn't have to be to the dollar and cent. Like you know, no. it's just. We need to know how roughly. close are we to five thousand dollars? <laughs> right, not forty nine ninety nine ninety nine. We're not buying a used car, but you know. I understand. I understand. And like I said, they're 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 minor they're minor projects. Okay. Um, but they stack up after a while. Yes. So there was some emails that went around about Chase Park boat ramp. Yes. And Jason I, Jason's here for that. He discuss. sent you guys a presentation. Okay. As to cost, time frame. Days. I didn't get that. No, me either. Was that today? Yeah. <coughs> this went today. Yeah, I, I did not get but any I of the think, today um, emails. Um, I spent all morning on it, so it just went down about 2 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. Nope. I didn't get it. All right. I know why you didn't get it. It's that cryptic email. Oh. I got a cryptic email, but I didn't reply to it because I don't like to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's got the new... Um, Oh, for the new server system? Yeah. Oh, and I fine. just figured it was spam, so I didn't touch it. Okay. And I didn't have time. With because, because, yeah, because yeah. the new system. Because Salem yeah. and I talked this morning. He didn't get them either, so. Okay. Yeah, nor did I. I didn't get nothing. Yeah, so, so Jason has packages or no? Yeah. So Jason has packages, which he'd gladly share if you want to go over yeah. the thoughts of that. Yeah, we can do that. Um, if that if she <coughs> if when she's done, she could have a package. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, yeah, that's, that's, I'd love to hear it. All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Good nice night. <laughs> I have one. I'm all set. I am all set. Thank Just you. down here somewhere. Right here. Thank you. Thank you. Basically, just a quick rundown of what DPW would do to help out. Um, short estimate on cost, which may go up or down depending on price of asphalt, price we had last year, um, and that price actually doesn't reflect handwork. So, depending on what the pavers do, that cost yeah, could might go up a little bit. I don't believe it'll take us 
uh, more than two weeks to accomplish what we need to accomplish. I just don't see it happening this year because for our permit, we're supposed to notify DES at least mm -hmm. a week in writing before. before. Yeah. And that puts us really close to the water levels rising and they're mm -hmm. actually yeah, past the, really they're. So when you say this year, you mean this uh, season? This spring, sorry. This season, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, this spring. Um, my suggestion is that we do it in the fall when they take the boards out and the water level. Water downs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, before the pavement plants close, obviously. Um, okay. Just means we're going to have to get the pavers to come back in town for this separate project, which obviously they're not in town at the right time for. Of course they aren't. Paving a boat ramp. Right. So. Okay. And I think the whole. We talked about the whole. Yeah, so I guess on page four, presentation here, it, uh, it shows exactly what's going on at the boat launch. People are power loading, power loading their boats, and it's just putting a, a divot in there. Um, I'd suggest that park, sign be made up. park even gets, gets a sign made up, puts that up, tries, tries to enforce it. You're not going to be able to do it 100%, but right. um, okay. it would help if a couple of the volunteers maybe or um, some employees could get in with rakes and shovels and rake that stuff back into the hole and fill that in for now for now um, mm -hmm. I'd love to say that we can do it just go down there with a piece of equipment but we're not supposed to stick anything in the water right right so how long would you expect this to last like yeah. this this kind of repair would it be just to get through a year or two or ten long term years? If if we do it right, I, it should last quite a while. It's not going to have. I mean, you're not having trucks driving up and down it. Yeah, um, there's really no weight on the bottom yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, Cause at the same time, we're talking about a potential grant that does have some potential issues as well. So the concrete uh, blocks essentially. It's that would TBD. be ideal. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I think it's also ARPA money. Um, and at the same time with. The might need you to bail me out, Janine. The the lease for yeah, no, Chase no, Park no, 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 expiring no. in 2039, I think. So it's sort of we're kind of on this these a few things swirling at the same time. So I asked the question of how yeah. long is it going to last? Because if it's a one or two year patch for a couple grand, but then we still need to do something to get us to at least 2039. Um, so yeah, it should last for quite a while. Okay. Okay. Right, yeah, and I, I would agree that obviously we've kind of passed the point now, but maybe try and do a better plan in the fall and think of it for that. But I just think a sign could help. Oh, a sign, a sign now would help. Yeah, a sign now would help. Staff. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think this is some sample wording that um, is used around. Um, Yeah, I don't know where I was a couple of years ago, but it talked about this power loading is prohibited. Yeah. But on the same sign, it said fines up to two hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, it's damaging the. Right. Right. Damaging you the. Might the, want to put that on. Because that might discourage you. Yeah. Yeah. When you take your boater's ed course or you get your you. license, it's yeah, it tells you not to do it, but. Yeah. But that's the easiest way to do it, and it's fun. <laughs> exactly. Especially when you're by yourself. Especially when there's a line of boats waiting. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So. All right. Yeah. I, I think we get to sign El Pronto. And, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the plan on the fall. You know. The raking of the materials, I mean, yeah. That we can do the best we can. It's, it's, it's like gravel. It's not like beach. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's yeah. nasty. Yeah. It is. Yep. Yeah. And I know we're, well, yeah. Okay. I guess while you're both here, there was also the big piece of wood. So I talked, oh, okay. okay, so that, so I talked to him about, uh, before the meeting, the, I bolted the football field barrier and the soccer field barrier between the boulder rocks, so it's not so drivable in there. Um, and then uh, the drainage in the driveway. As far as the piece of wood, I was out there just looking just the other day. It's, it's not, it's not movable. So it's, it's part of the, you know, the embankment keeping the sand where it is instead of washing out the water. So it's it's not just a telephone pole. Mm. They, and there's three pieces of 
rebar at least one inch. They're about as dangerous as a rock. They're, I don't think there's any more danger than the rocks we naturally have there. And the, the wood just, so I'm not concerned with it needing to be removed. I think when the water was low last year, it was visible. I think it distorted it or looked worse, but now it, it's more, because all the pieces, they're bent over, they're really big. So as much as a round rock would, you know, hurt your foot, it's the same. Um, so it's not, it's okay. not something not a concern. pulled out. It would literally have to have the rebar, like, ground off. Where is this now? Uh, in the water. It's in the water. At the it's beach. The furthest part of the beach, right before basically that stone wall, it's like the property line. It's it's a pine. I mean, it's got to be 20, 30 inches. And it's in the sand. Like, you can you can only see the top third of it. And there's three pieces of, of rebar. And so the wood has just worn away over the years. So the rebar right. would have been in the wood. And it's it's a good thick one inch rebar and it's bent. There's three different pieces and it's bent. I took pictures. Okay. Um, if anybody wants to see them, they're on my. But if it's, if it's a moot point, we'll. Yeah, I, I don't think it's something that. Okay. That we need to worry about. But it was okay. we did have it on our list and then I went and got my eyes on it again. Okay. So. All right. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, both of you. One more thing. Uh oh. Real quick. <laughs> Real quick, I promise. It's just a couple updates from Atlantic and from oh. NHW. Oh, okay, yep. Atlantic will be in May 1st to go ahead with the um, compact repairs. Yep. And when do you have another question? Then we are going to find out May 4th about our grant for the Baylor. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Much appreciated. On the schedule, are we all set to go ahead and post that to the website? That doesn't need a hearing, no, correct? The schedule's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the schedule's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you all. Recognize Chief Moore for a lengthy list. Lengthy list. Be a while. Please don't. Oh, well. It is what it is. We'll see. All right. So, two housekeeping items. Uh, Lieutenant Hebert was retitled to Captain Hebert. There were no additions to his position description or responsibilities, no increase in pay and benefits, and the change was ICS based. Um, his primary duty in a, I wouldn't say a normal incident, but his primary duty would be to run the staging area, and obviously rank recognition comes into play with that. Uh, second item goes back to Mr. Butts. Uh, concern over the Concord Monitor article on April 3rd. Um, I did review that article. It was a good article. It was just about uh, <coughs> retention and stuff. There's just a little bit of confusion. Clear up. Uh, four positions for 24-7 coverage. We have two vacancies, which makes six. We have two people looking to go, which makes eight. That's where that came from. She just combined it too much where it wasn't clear. Uh, it was. She had the information. She just didn't combine it correctly. Auction items. So as mentioned back in October, uh, we have another au auction coming up. We have our old Glock pistols, roughly 14 to 15, um, which we can sell. We can either go to the auction, my recommendation, which other towns do do, including Golfstown and others. They use a federally firearms licensed dealer um, who will give us book value on the firearms, cut a check to the town, goes into the general fund, and they'll do all the paperwork. So the I would agree with that. Okay. As one, I just want to see it transferred correctly. Yep. Absolutely get paperwork. That's yep. a big portion of it. I just want it. to see it transferred correctly. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Everybody Everybody's good with that route? Yep. Mm -hmm. Make it happen. Uh, summer dam patrols. These are just a typical. I do have contracts if mm -hmm. you want to review them again, but this is what we've been doing for years. We're on our summer months. We actually already on, already on them. April 1st is when we started. <coughs> I just need permission to sign the contract <coughs> on behalf of the town. Uh, if we do all patrols, it would be an amount of $9,854.55. Typically, we do between six dollars and $7,000 worth of patrols. Two patrols a day. Each one is 30 minutes during the summer. Any board other questions? This is a reoccurring contract yeah. we usually do with them. We had it in the Right. So.
Um, who signs? Is it me or is it me. the chief? Y'all get permission from me, and I sign everything and make them go. Is that the route mm -hmm. the board wants to take? Yeah. Am I crazy? There's one date on here. It's 2021. Is that just the that's probably where originating we date? Them. Okay. Yeah, the effective date is up here. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. so that must have been when it started back yeah. two Make years ago. Sure. Yeah. We it, this is just like a renewal of that initial contract, yeah. which probably started in 2021. So yeah. what is the first? The A the A says the contract is increased by 860343 from 16,000 to 25. And you just mentioned the middle section. So what is uh, the total that we're looking to approve tonight? Uh, $9,854.55. So what does that first paragraph have to do with? It says total know? cost of contract is increased by $8,000. Yeah, what's that first part have to do with? So I believe that's old contracts, maybe from the last summer, where they reallocate funds. I'm not totally positive. I haven't seen that in the contract before. There's usually different uh, portions of the contract we get. Like, obviously, we're allocated $9,854.55 for our summer details. We won't do all of that, so they'll do additional paperwork to get back 3000 Or, you know, if we don't do $3,000 worth of uh, patrols, they'll do paperwork where we relinquish rights to that money to give it back to them, essentially, because we didn't do the patrols. So I'm guessing that's just housekeeping items. I mean, it just—it says the total cost of, cost of the contract is now twenty-five thousand right? dollars. Yeah, I didn't get that one either, At the, and that might be from the life of it. But our summer patrols are nine thousand eight hundred fifty-four dollars and fifty-five cents. I just don't know what section A is. What is section A? Well, this is just—I guess yes, but. Uh, it seemed like we were just a portion of a larger contract, and that so this being summary of changes, they changed section A with a broader contract. We fall under okay. uh, B5. And okay. very well be. Yeah. This, it might be a bigger part of a bigger project too. Well, the, does anyone else patrol down there, like another community? Dumbarton, are they in there? Yes. No. Now we're. This is just for us. Is that is that twenty five? Maybe that's the total. Maybe the first year we was around eight thousand, and the second year roughly the same, and then the third year, because this is the third year we're doing it. We started in twenty one. Yeah. So I know since we started, we're, we're yeah. probably around 22000 that we've actually earned. Right. Total. I don't think we're at the twenty five yet. Okay. okay. It just is very odd to see yeah. that like that. Yeah, we're at a different, huh? Yeah. It's the feds, I mean. And they're yeah. texting me, but I don't understand what he's saying. No, don't worry about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think it must be what, from the what's start he saying? of That's just Reference to winter patrol said that's why an increase in AK, but I don't get it. Yeah. So that's just going to complicate things. So, okay. Um, all right, I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion that Chief Moore sign the contract between the U.S. Army Engineer District of New England for the this summer of uh, patrolling Cross State Park. Second. 2023. The amount? $9,000. $854.55. Is there a second? Second. Move and second and all in favor? Aye. Yes. yes. Okay, next item, and this can be pushed because it wasn't on the agenda tonight, uh, old item line of sign testing. Since we got the information from the state, oh. the state's not able to do it. Do we want to, do y'all want to look at that quote real quick? We just need the quote signed so we can get that moving. Or do you want to do it next time? I think we should probably look at it now. What do you guys think? Because we're going to get this ball rolling. The equipment's going to show up pretty quick. Yep. We, so Good faith effort to try to get it for free. You had a question last time about could they do it at a different height. Yeah, which would be proven in this if they yes. go up 10 feet Correct. or whatever. Okay, be but are they going to do – are assume. they measuring – are they checking the line of sight at – They are checking the line of sight. Heights, proper height. Well, they're checking the line of sight at the proposed heights, but I'm sure that they'll, they'll send it up if they have to. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I just don't want to come back with another – Right. $9,000 no. checking. No, no, I, I get you, yeah, yeah. So just make sure that that's poked Gosh. in there. That it, I mean, if we have to buy a buy a little real estate a little further up, then we will have to do what we got to do. But 
I don't know that it's buying the real estate. It's the monthly obligation you're paying, right? That's what I'm, yeah. Right, yeah, right at, the the level, fee, at, the level sure at the level, at the level we're that's... at, at the level we're at, exactly, it's free. But okay. if we go up, if we can bargain with them. Right, but it's just if it's just something that's a constant monthly payment. Maybe. Okay. That's what I'm saying. We need, just get the ball rolling. If we can go up okay. 10 feet and nobody, no harm, no foul, then maybe it'll help. I don't know. I mean, can we just, can, can we include that? That, hey, if they realize it's a fail and they are already standing there for send thousands the, of dollars. Send the balloon up a little higher. Yeah, not a problem. Okay. Yeah. The balloon is only for the well, east yeah, wear the station guys. The guys where there's the no tower, but okay. they already have climbers on the other towers. Okay. That I would imagine can do that because they're going to have the gear. Yeah, climb a little higher if you could. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I'll, uh, ooh. This is going to come out of the ARPA, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll move that we um, approve proposal 48-48912 with two-way communications for the line of sight testing for remote site mounting locations and proposed east station for the total of $9,020 come out of the ARPA funding. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Noes? Abstentions? Okay. All right, we're moving right along. Life items, vehicles. So a lot of good ideas I've been hearing. This information is available online on the PD website. Uh, tonight's comments, <coughs> uh, the grant limits us to a command vehicle. Particularly, we cannot go for a patrol vehicle because it has to be tied into COVID, which is where we're using ICS to tie it in. So that's why it's a command vehicle. Although we will look at other grant opportunities, obviously we'll try to take a free vehicle anytime we can get one. Uh, regarding previous comments uh, for the chief uses at 90%, 97% of the time, that didn't come from me. There is no statistical data behind that. Uh, to use car one as an example this year, car We've been down to one or two cars since February 16th due to transmission, engine, and vehicle accident issues. Uh, car one's pretty much been at the disposal of the department. I've been taking my personal vehicle back and forth. Um, if we can track that, I can put in, in for mileage if we want. I haven't been able to do that, but just so y'all can keep track of how much I'm actually taking my personal vehicle, just so you can give, uh, give you data, I can do that too. Um, Let's see. Let's see. All right, so I gave you the list. This is just an overview of the vehicles. Uh, we have five patrol vehicles. Uh, the information there is back from February when I actually was able to put hands on all our vehicles. Uh, we have two command vehicles that are up fit for ICS. Uh, on the second one is the fleet management uh, proposal. Uh, going up to 2030. Ideally, shouldn't if we didn't run in, in, into any life situations, a patrol vehicle would last six years, command vehicles would last 12 years. Um, that's ideally. Obviously, as I've been stating, stating in finance committees and CIP committees, due to the status of our fleet, uh, we're going to have these issues for the next couple of years because they haven't been replaced in a timely manner. We need one car a year. We haven't been able to get that. Uh, <coughs> we're going to do the best we can, but the Dodges are old and do not hold up well. There was questions as to why we went with the Tahoe. There's a couple of additional information points I had as to why we went with the Tahoe. Um, the Tahoe is built on a truck platform rather than a, a car platform. Both the Dodge and the Ford are a car platform, means the Tahoe is going to in have increased durability. It's going to uh, hold up better. Uh, the Tahoe was a lower price point than the Ford, not a higher. When we looked at several years' worth of data, and this was back in 2019 when we were pitching the Tahoe, um, it maintain its price point on state bid. It didn't have those large fluctuations. Ford did every time they did a new uh, rollout of an improved model of the vehicle, so they went up in price. Um, obviously, once we go to the Tahoe, we don't want to switch because we want to be able to recycle equipment as we get new vehicles. Uh, radio should last four to five vehicles. The prisoner partition, two to three vehicles. Am I going too fast? Oh, no, you're not writing for me. Sorry. Um, 
<laughs> well, yeah, I'm yeah, just sorry. Back at the grant, so. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you, you, do yeah. Roll, you get on a roll and you just go head down it, so. Yeah, it was. Well, luckily, everything's recorded. But, you know, different different elements of the vehicle uh, last different periods. So, obviously, we'd be rolling as much equipment as we could into new vehicles that we could to lower the price point. Um, if we could actually get on a vehicle life cycle plan where we're replacing them one a year, we'd be able to sell the vehicles that, you know, we looked at the resale value of the Tahoe uh, when we first pitched this because if we buy the, the Tahoe this year was $43,000 base price, you can sell them at six years old with 125,000, 150,000 miles on them with $15,000, $18,000, which would go right into lowering the price of the new one. And again, you're recycling equipment so that price point for new vehicles currently is going to drop drastically if we get on a life cycle. Um, when we pitched the grant, I divided it up into eight tiers. The first five tiers are ICS related. The, and we're going to go for broke, uh, you know, six, seven, and eight are all patrol vehicle. Obviously, patrol is our priority. Um, it's the meat and the potatoes of the organization. If I have multiple vehicles down, just like I'm doing now, I'm going to roll a command vehicle right up into patrol so those guys can do their job. Um, if we have a vehicle that's upfit, we're going to do that. Even if the grant only provides for the vehicle, us doing these dam patrols is going to provide us a funding source, just like uh, Selectman Cahill mentioned last time, he can put that right into my vehicle line and we can continue to upfit the vehicle as we earn the money. You know, even if it takes three years, that's a 12-year vehicle. You know, that's a win. We did it with, you know, no taxpayer expense. Um, all of my presentations are online, but good question. Uh, why don't we do it with the supervisor vehicles? Look at the shooting that off, uh, Sergeant McGuire was in. If he's in that command vehicle and he's first one on scene, his vehicle is now in the scene. We don't have access to it, which means we've just lost all the equipment that I've been trying to get to manage the scene. The command vehicle has to stay in the back. Um, as far as keeping it at the uh, precinct, I don't care. Me personally, I'd rather not get the flack. Um, I'm treated like a burden around here. It gets old by a lot of citizens. It gets real old. I try to do a good job, present good information where people can have faith in this department that we can do the job necessary when we're called upon. It happens annually. Annually, we get that call. They don't get that call. I get that call. Um, my phone goes with me everywhere on vacation. It has been for 15 years. Um, I get anxiety if I forget my phone on the charger. It's been that long. That's how it happens because these guys know when they call on me, I'm going to answer. Sometimes I need to come in. Sometimes I don't need to come in, but we're going to handle our business because that's what we get paid to do. Um, if you go back to the CIP presentation, you remember that target area? You've got your hot zone, your warm zone, your cold zone. Command vehicle goes outside the hot zone. It doesn't go up to the hot zone. If we made a supervisor vehicle, it'd be in the hot zone, so we'd lose the resources. Um, any other questions off the top of your head? So, <clears throat> only because I see it being a question. So, your command vehicle is yours, you know, you know to take home if, when you, if you say you do go on vacation. Mm -hmm. Would that then be passed on to the next supervisor left of the precinct? Fight takes it. Okay. Just Every in time case there was an incident while you were wherever. Yeah, there's always somebody in charge of the department. If I'm not there, uh, Captain Hebert's in charge, he takes it. Okay. Um, somebody has to have that responsibility. We don't shirk our responsibility just because I'm out of the area or somebody else is out of the area. Mm -hmm. um, we, we, you know, mentioning grant opportunities, um, once we get our emergency operation plan updated, we're going to be doing a lot more training in ICS because we don't want to start it yet because we're missing out on grant opportunities. Um, if we do it now and complete it through FEMA, we can, uh, for instance, one of the things I looked like was I looked at was a covered trailer. Um, it's about eight thousand dollars. FEMA will give us a grant where. They will pay half, but they will also let us earn our half by counting hours of training toward the half. So we can get a trailer for free just by doing ICS training, for example. But we can't do that because we're out of compliance with the emergency operations plan. Um, we've heard an agriculture grant. You can get vehicles. I don't know. We haven't really seen that yet. But, you know, we're always looking. We, we've seen opportunities for um, radar units. 
where now we don't have to put them in the upfit. So we're always looking. You know, there, has to be, uh, there has to be a balance between the town supporting us, actually looking for grants, doing our jobs, and just hammering us for trying to do our jobs. Because that's what it's starting to feel like. You know what I mean? I guess for me, for the grant for the vehicle would be just to, to understand and know how much of that vehicle in total is going to be covered by the grant when, when you present it. You know what I mean? Oh, that's good. Uh, thank you. I kind of missed the meat and potatoes on it. So we had an update from the grant. Uh, initial funding, almost expended. We're not going to get the vehicle. However, good news. Obviously, they, it was about $2 million to start. Not all that money is going to get spent by June 30th. The information we're getting, they're expecting about $100,000 back after June 30th, I believe, was the cutoff date. Once they figure out how much is available, we're number one. That's good. So, yeah. So, it's just a matter of what they decide to approve. You know, I gave them eight tiers, even if they give us the vehicle. Huge win. I've got $21,000 sitting in that uh, dam patrol account where we can upfit with you guys' approval as much necessary there. And like I said, you know, as we earn, we'll continue to up it because I've got it broken down in eight stages. Okay. Do you know when the Tahoe, I guess the body changed last? Like Just recently. Okay. Uh, the 2021 was the first year. Okay, that's great. Yep, it, uh, they actually lowered it, which okay. Um, but they did a couple other things. But that was their first change in a while, like eight or nine years from what I recall. We researched that um, in 2019. We were looking because we didn't want a vehicle that changed all the time because that might impact the equipment you're putting yep. in it. Because yep. if they change the dimensions, now something you had doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. That's okay. why I ask. You gotta get <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Tahoe, the Tahoe was the most stable out of everybody. Okay. For the warranties, did we, did we get three years, five years? What did you get for warranty? <sighs> if I'm not mistaken, it's. Five years, 100,000. Okay. Thanks, Ryan. Back here. So 10 years could have got you 150, right? 10 years could have got me 150. 10 years, 150,000 miles is well, your next year. Will, will they do that, though, on a commercial vehicle? That I, I believe so. I didn't inquire about it, but, yeah, I, I missed what you were talking about. But, yeah. yes, I mean, I could look at those prices. No, I'm just saying because, you know, what? I mean, we're pushing some of these out. 10 mm. years, right. And even if, even if it's in the seven window. You still want to have that? that oh, sure. Yeah. yeah. You just like I said, seven to eight years, still be covered. Maybe that's something the damn funds could be spent on when we get new vehicles. I mean, it's yeah. You see what the cost difference is. Yeah. yeah. It's ten, I've had about this I'll much luck it. with warranties, so. Ten, ten years is was available. Sure. I had ten. Right. Everything today is electronic, and it oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The littlest burp or something in it. Right. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can inquire. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Here. Awesome. You always have fine print why I don't cover it. Oh, yes. Oh, I know. Trust me. So, but, you know, like I said, we, we uh, in the police department, we, we try to be as transparent as we can. Uh, my past CIP presentations are available online. My pr past presentation finance committee numbers are there. I answer questions all the time. Problem is, people don't ask me questions. They just tend to assume and jump to conclusions and put out incorrect information. And then I'm fixing it and That's spending up you guys' time. Well, welcome, so. to, welcome to the club. Yeah. So, all right. All set? Yep. All right. Anything Very else? Good. I don't have anything. All right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey. Oh, Can ACO. You sorry. Oh, jeez. Thank you very much. No. Appreciate that. You already walked away. Good looking so. out. Uh, auction items. We have had zero interest for our ACO position. Mm -hmm. Do we want to? Well, I would recommend making a decision now. If we don't get an ACO, like zero interest, uh, we send the ACO vehicle to auction. How how long have we been advertising for an ACO? A couple weeks. Two weeks now, about. It'll it'll be just under a um, month by the time, and we have no inquiries. Do you have <clears throat> plans to get one someday? An ACO person. Great. What's the um, what's the pay rate for you? So it, my plan, which I would, of course, have to get approved by you guys, it'd be in three tiers. Uh, roughly $16 an hour while they're probationary, starting out. Um, and then you'd have a uh, two different levels, one for 
in law enforcement action, one for non-law enforcement action, you know, licensing and stuff like that. When they're trained just to by themselves handle, hey, I've got the llama in the road on 114 again. Can you come get it? Or, you know, there's a dead deer over here. Can you come get it? That's that second tier. They know what to do, know what to do, um, where to take animals, how to care for them, stuff like that, first aid for animals. And then there's the enforcement. Okay, now let me look at licensing. Okay, have you had repeat calls for dogs at large you know so each of those tiers i was thinking about a buck 50 difference so 16 17 15 19 is what i was thinking so do you have plans of someday getting one ACO if i found the right person i would support it um my guys are trained in it it saves us some time not a ton of time it takes a lot of time to train somebody to do that position and the big picture is probably easier for us just to do it ourselves if um, what, do you have an estimated cost, monthly annual cost of what the vehicle cost you setting there? No, I mean it's paid for. Um, it's got a thousand dollar budget. I don't come anywhere close to that. We undercoat it. Uh, we get the oil changed twice a year, I believe. Still, even though I mean it's driven minimally, um, wiper blades, just basic stuff. So I guess I a couple hundred dollars. I just I just assume keep it and there and okay. and I got a couple reasons. One of them is is supporting exactly what Benji says. It's not really costing us anything. Mm -hmm. And there was a huge push to get it. Yep. We got it. We purchased it. Um, it obviously, it hasn't seen a lot of life in service. So for for me to get rid of it is basically we got it for no reason. Mm -hmm. Especially if we. Well, we had a person. Somebody, if you have if you qualify, I understand all right. that. Right. We have, we had a person I, then who. Right, but, but I feel that the intention is is still to have an ACO for the town. Yes, I, and I did. If the right person comes along, yeah, I, and did, I understand that. I did see somebody online, but I was hoping they would. And, you know, I'm not going to. And that's fine, but I don't also don't want to spite our nose by saying, yeah, well, you know, we get rid of it, and then you know, the jackpot shows up. Hey, we need a vehicle again. Yeah. And and at that sure. point, I'd be a no vote because okay. you know at that right. point we yeah. had one that didn't cost us anything. Blame type thing so yep i I, I would rather keep it so when you get a dog you throw it in the cruiser uh sometimes we take the aco vehicle uh well it depends on what we're doing if we if we go to the scene like if we're called yeah we'll pick up the dog or yeah. people bring, bring us dogs all the time we put them in a holding cell inside the uh inside the puppy jail. The station yeah put them in the um if the we can't cell. find the owner uh, we can load them up in the because we've got kennels in the aco vehicle and run them out to yeah but it depends Pope. on staffing too take them away Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 big thing staffing because if we're running the dog out and we get a call for service, we got to go to the call for service, and we don't want to be in the ASO vehicle and not in our patrol vehicle. So yeah. it's always you know this job is always the yeah. shuffle, you know, doing the things with the best interest in okay. you know no, just, with taxpayers. I mean, so it does have a use. If yes. I, yes. I would want. I'd be an advocate to keep it. Okay. So. Sounds good. That's what I was looking for. Direction. Thanks for pointing that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. I'll throw out. <laughs> Jumping back to receiving flack, I appreciate mm -hmm. talking with you and especially talking with Jason, the interim DPW director, as far as you know, the speed. a lot of it, that they have been available to me, but also proactively sending us as a board a ton of information so that we're not yeah. searching all the time. So yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. There. Yeah. Well, it helps us to make better, yep. better judge yep. estimated. I'd rather have know. too much info than not. Oh, absolutely. Right, so. Right, so because you even met yourself, you bring a lot of information to the table. So, oh, yeah. so we, we like to review it. That's what I did today. Well informed decisions. Yeah. Well That's informed decisions. What I did today was review all your emails at lunchtime. So just to make sure I was prepared. just lunchtime, huh? Just to make sure I was prepared. It's quick reading. That's yeah, a lot of reading. Skim reading. Okay. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Did we cover July fourth? <coughs> What's that? Did we cover July fourth? July 4th. I think that was a contract. That was last year. Or last last year. Because we've got two contract approvals here. Summer patrols at Clough. No, John four, John, July 4th we already did. We did last time I met. Okay. Okay. Because it was on the, It's on there. It's all. Yeah. Well, it was on your list. Was it? Yeah, yeah. maybe it was just a. The July 4th title. detail for the. Yeah, no, I know which one. We've already signed that. That's okay. already sent. We're good. That's the one you did last time. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. We'll move on then. To the Conservation Commission, recognize Andy Fulton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Andy Fulton, the chair of the Conservation Commission. Um, first off, Andy, good to see you up here. Thank you. 
Thank you. Good to see you always. Yes. Thank you. Salem. Salem. <laughs> nice to yeah. meet you. See, I had to ask, so I don't Sorry. mispronounce it. Um, Salem. Terrible Good day. to meet you. Um, This is uh, some information from when the town purchased a piece of property uh, and it was a multi-participant uh, multi purchase including the Conservation Commission and some of the things that are outlined in the purchasing article sort of set the expectations for the property including the Conservation Commission's uh, involvement with it. Um, we're talking about the, um, the Banks Schmidt property on East Road and uh, Vice Chairman Nager, Steve Nager, um, visited last fall doing a, a, a personal walk and found access to the property um, posted, no trespassing. So that kind of brought it to Steve's attention. Steve brought it to our attention, and we've been wanting to talk with you guys about uh, the role of uh, Conservation Commission on conservation properties, and as well as some observations um, that Steve had on the property um, in general. Um, we have a lot of properties uh, that are under conservation management, and just a few of them, maybe just a couple major ones, are uh, multiple use by different town entities. Obviously the transfer station in the, the town forest is one and I think that's been managed by um, you know the, the DPW, you guys with your involvement, our involvement and things have worked out just fine there. There are some on that property some aspects of it that are um, challenging because we're not delineated for a specific specific use in a specific place so their boundaries are you know subject to discussion and you know that's that's where you know I think we offer some value to the town and to the selectmen is just in that discussion um, does it make sense to move this operation over to this point is that in keeping with the property and its um, you know multiple stakeholders in it uh, the reason jumping over to the second and the topic tonight of mixed-use properties um, this one back in purchasing had a intent to mine to have a gravel pit for the town town resource um, things were running out uh, over by the transfer station so we've known about that for a long time we've kind of come to grips with it but the surprise was to find that there was supposed to no trespassing uh, with the mixed-use property including the conservation interest for <coughs> use as a as a police uh, range and we would hope in the future when on these mixed-use properties something's to change is that we could just be invited to the table for the discussion mm -hmm. you know maybe we have some insights into it but um, you know we, we just ask for that uh, you know the recognition and the, the courtesy to mm -hmm. um, Make it so we're not at least not surprised, and you know, potentially even there'll be benefit to the town by having a, a little bit of wider audience into the management decisions on that. So, and I, I think that's caused a little bit of uh, grief for the town, and uh, my understanding is it hasn't been used um, since uh, last year, maybe last summer. Um, so, so we'd like to you know take this time as a. Yeah. As a commission, I should let you know we've got um, five of our six members here. Uh, Steve Nager is the uh, vice chair. Um, we've got um, our secretary, Mike Camacho, and another member, Mark Phillips, and Sherry sits on, on the commission. And we have one member who's uh, unable to join us tonight. So we're here with the quorum. If there's a decision to be made, we can we can help make it, mm -hmm. um, but just for information and just to sort of reintroduce ourselves, uh, board changes, commission changes, faces change, and, and we just want to uh, make sure that we're, um, you know, 
seeing seeing eye to eye on where things uh, need to go and and you know provide information to you guys and get some feedback from yeah. from you on you know perhaps how we got to where we are there was a time and i'm going to ask when was when was the posted sign noted yeah come on up here. <coughs> I just want to know when that, when that was noted. Um, so it was roughly November. So it's not just a posted sign. The, you know, the gates got moved around a little bit down there. So I think Ray Banks moved the gate up to the road. And that's, yeah. Put a bunch of posted signs up. So we talked about that before, and he was just playing a game with his property. That was what there. my question was, yeah. because I knew that that was in the mix. Yeah, so Ray was kind of playing games down there. And... Um, but, you know, we own the right uh, driveway going straight up through, and then it gets onto the town land about three-quarters of the way up in the field. And then, so, in November, the the actual gate, which is the main road, the, the older gate, it seems like some gates moved back or someone put some gates back up. The gates at the wood line okay. had uh, no trespassing, police rifle range, something to, or a shooting range, something to that effect. And that's literally three, four hundred yards from where the actual pit is. So it's like, you know, it, it just the message there was really kind of confusing. So I think I talked to Brandon about it, my pleasure, and then, uh, you know, someone else down the police station, and then found out it was in the selectman's minutes. So that's kind of, and then around the actual pit itself, somebody put no trespassing signs, maybe to, because of the mining activity, but that's, I don't know if we should just have active mine or something um down there so those were just localized right on the pit mm -hmm. itself when did them pop up same i noticed in the same time in november so i don't know who did it um and there's a couple other issues like that are they're kind of all mixed in the in the, the management of this pro uh property is a little difficult because hey we didn't come up with the project the intent never got completely finished with a um, conservation easement on everything except for the 20 acres, and the 20 acres has never been nailed down, you know, surveyed. But the um, some things to think about. We made a few mistakes as a town. So the the uh, the actual permit has never been filed with DES to be in there mining. So we need to do a um, it's uh, alteration of terrain. The banks had that, but we never did it. Oh, okay. So that's a problem. We really should. I noticed there's a there's a wetland that's pretty close to where we're mining, and whoever that big excavator, whoever owned that, it looks like somebody knocked a tree over and went on Brown's land from our property. But also, we're mining like we're getting very very close to the property line. So when we do do that work, we should probably have that all flagged out and have that wetland delineated and figure out which direction we're really going when we take more material out of there. So definitely some just good stewardship activities that we need to take care of there from, you know, from an environmental perspective. So that, that kind of went on. And then, you know, if you think about the, the other thing and just, the, you know, it's great to have good communication with the Board of Selectmen. Many years ago after we got this, there was a concern to make sure that that field got maintained. And there's a fellow that goes down there and hays it and fertilizes it. He talked to us once, but... Kind of the one danger that we really have as a town, like we do a logging job, there's a contract, there's mm -hmm. a written contract. I don't think there's a written contract with that guy. And the, um, you know, nowadays you look at like all the things that are happening with PFAS and contamination. So, you know, you want to make sure that whatever he fertilizes that field with and whatever the conditions are, I mean, we all agree. Um, so th there should be a contract for that that guy. And it should be. Up. Huh? I was going to ask that yeah. question. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, so we never cut wood without a contract, um, you know. And, and wood yeah. goes out to bid. Yeah, there's a value yeah. To it. This guy's just doing it for free. I don't know if there's any real commercial value in that, because I think he's probably, he's probably taking care of the, you know, what bank still owns in there. Um, I think Ray's going to. bought a bale of hay for a horse or not? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. I only bought the erosion hay. Yeah, I don't buy the, I don't buy the um, so feed value hay. hay. Yeah. So there's, you know, there's kind of these multiple issues, and then just thinking about, um, you know, so the, the one example we had in the past where we did a change of, of land use with the Felch, um, we went in and mined the esker that was there. That actually went out to the vote of the townspeople to take it out of conservation. So, I mean, if you're going to permanently make this a police range, you know, that's different than making it a ball field. So, I mean, that's something that townspeople probably ought to vote on and it probably should be flagged off. But, you know, the thing to be aware of, you literally are like 10 feet from 
Brown's property on the side of that thing. So I don't know from a you know safety perspective, someone who needs to know what they're doing, you know, needs to go look at it and see if that's prudent or not. Um, generally, if you look at the RSA on conservation, I think it's 36 something or other. But once a property's in conservation, like the commission kind of does the active management of it. I mean, you know, and you guys, the board of select, when you can do whatever you want, I suppose. But the general intent is is for the commission to manage it. Okay. Yeah. So some so good which issues. To which brown? <coughs> which brown is it near? Uh, the one on East Road, right? The. Um, he doesn't own that anymore. The town does. Don't that. No, the one under PLC that's beyond it. We don't own that. Oh, Chris Bolton's property bunnies. comes up to a corner of it too. Bunnies. Okay, that's what I mean. It's brown. Okay. Not that the one the cemetery bought up the other side of it, because yeah. that's next to Bol uh, Chuck Bolton's property, and then there's a, yeah the piece that they bought there, but it's oh, way so down the Charlie other corner. Brown. Yeah, because. Yeah, yeah, Mount William, it looks like, has a road coming right out by the, the corner of the property okay. down there. Well, that's the old road that went through the east way years ago. I think that's what he's talking about. Yeah, this, this, it's pretty, it's Cause nothing I, If you were the talk in the cemetery, it was Gordon Brown's, and we bought that a long time ago. No, the one that's under the Forest Society easement, that's our butter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that was done by the, um, what is it? PLC. The yeah. L Chip, the ranch. Land ranch and something else. Yeah. Grant. Yeah. I think it's a forest society easement, if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow, we're darn close to the boundary, okay. and we're darn close to a well. You know, whoever owns what in there. Uh, okay. But it's not, I believe it's not town land. Just looking, because when I was in there wandering around, I had the, um, you know, you can open up that, uh, the town the tax map website yeah. and have a little blue dot on your phone, kind of while you're wandering mm -hmm. around just to see where the boundaries are. So, yeah, that's um, just something to consider. The In that road, like if you walk into the, the property, the road where the, the police shooting range sign is with the flag you could fit in there, I mean, that's like the kind of a main way to get up through there to walk. So, I mean, if we do have to close something off, it would be ideal just to kind of close off, you know, the pit area. Yep. But, uh, the pit area is pretty small, really, right yeah. now. Right now, exactly, yeah. Yeah. We, we knew it was quite small. Yeah, so. yeah, and this you know there's a lot of old mining activity as you went up through there, but it's all grown over now and stuff, right. and there's nothing going on. Right. So is the understanding that that is conservation piece? Which one? The one on East Road. Yeah. That that whole Schmidt property. Okay. Cause yeah, it's under conservation. So, according to, I'll share my emails with Brian. So there, you guys, after the meeting, you guys also had. Brian Hotz from the Society come in on June of 2015. Him and I swapped an email September 8th of 2020 where he said the project never proceeded from the early discussions. Any grant funds that were awarded by Emma Sawyer Trust were never accepted since the project didn't go forward. Uh, I doubt these funds would be available now. As I recall, the CONCOM said they didn't have a role and it would need to be the selectmen who would need to follow up on the issue if they want to convey an easement on the land. Mm -hmm. After several attempts to get the selectmen to respond, I assume they didn't and the project is dead. I don't know if the warrant article forces them to convey an easement or simply said they could. If the recall was, if you recall, this was an effort by the uh, Russell Foundation who I think helped. So that was September of 2020 from Brian at Society for the Protection of New Hampshire Forest. So that, but that's different than conservation land. That's a conservation easement. There is no easement on it. Correct, but we purchased the land with the ability to convey conservation easements. Sure. We have another warrant article, Naomi, that we can convey conservation easements on any conservation. Um, um, but what you just handed yeah. us says that we can on this one particular parcel yep. um, that we can auth and, and it authorizes selectmen to convey certain easements yep. um, and then 20 acres will be set aside for a recreational and gravel pit and then it talks yep. about all the funding yep. but it was purchased as town property with the idea that convey to, to convey certain easements that didn't happen. It was purchased as town conservation land, so technically it's in conservation. If you look in the town report, it's listed as conservation land on that parcel. So we can undo conservation land with a vote or portions of conservation land with a mm -hmm. you know a vote of the townspeople. If once it's under easement, there's no way to undo it. 
Well, this was what was on the thing. This is what people voted on. Right. Well, I guess, and, and that's where um, there was a whole bunch of money spent. There was six hundred thousand yep. dollars, of which the conservation put in fifty. Mildred Hall did one thirty, and then the remainder, which was going to be um, offsetting grants by the Russell Foundation. And then it says, this is a non-lapsing article and will not lapse until the project is complete or December 31st of 2018, which comes first. So if 2020 we hadn't done anything, 2018 came first. I'm, I'm not trying to split hairs. I'm just trying to understand that the article says that we're going to convey with an expiration date of 2018. I'm not saying that we shouldn't cooperate, communicate, and everything else. I'm just saying that we didn't convey in the easement. No relevance to the discussion, though, really, because the easement is a totally different animal. And uh, but where does it say that we bought a conservation piece? Am I missing it? It says conservation. We use conservation money to buy, yeah, from the yeah. conservation fund. $50,000 out of six hundred. I'm just reading, because this is what Brian pointed out, that one sentence, which, sorry, I didn't mean to hog them all. There's four copies. So that, it sounds like that's the uh, Society for Protection of Natural Forest just acknowledging that the uh, easement was never completed. Right, therefore, we've run out of time in 2020, because 2018 came and went. You run out of time for what? Because the article said... It, this is a non-lapsing article and will not lapse until the complete project is complete or the 30, uh, December 31st of 18, whichever comes first. So in 2020, it right. says right. it I didn't get, get it. So, so is, is your contention then that it's... I'm not having any contention. Non, I'm just wanting to try to straighten it out. We're, we're just but for 50000 out of 600 <coughs> I'm just saying what... There was all these other pieces in it, including the taxpayers. So it went, it's, it's identified in the town report as conservation land, so I don't think we're going to undo that with a discussion. Well, I don't, I mean, that, that could be an error. I don't think it is. The, you look at the intent from the discussion at the deliberative, I mean, clearly the intent is to, you know, we talk in here, efforts to protect the rural character and natural resources of the town and to further authorize the selectman to convey certain conservation easements. Now, again, we didn't create the wording on this. That right. would lead you to believe the intent is to conserve the property. You couldn't, mm -hmm. there's nothing else you could possibly scheme out of that except for that. But the 20, it's real clear in the 20 acres, the idea there was to, and again, we didn't come up with this, we didn't create the language, right. but was to mine it and turn it into ball fields. Mm -hmm. That was the intent. I guess I look at the intent of the actual article for the person right. that doesn't pick this up and read it. So if you were to take, because how many people go to town meeting? Let's admit there's 50 people. Yeah, yeah. You know? So if you look at the intent of Article 29 as it was written, and unless I'm admitting, and I'm happy if I made a mistake, I'd admit it, but where does it say that we're buying conservation land? Well, I think in the... There's certain conservation easements. I think in the... It in says the that we're going to convey certain conservation easements. Over a portion of the property. Right. So then you could also go back to the town, you know, to our, we look at our meeting minutes and what we intended for that 50000 when we authorized it as a commission, because there would have been a public hearing on that as well. But I don't think anyone's really, you know, unless we really want to contend that that's not conservation land, then, you know, I could just talk to the town people about what they really thought about it. Cause well, I, I, the, I'm, I'm reading the, the, the notes from the deliberative, mm. and it seems like 117 of the 137 would be in conservation, but the town would own 37 of it. So it seems like we're on town property. We're not on the conservation area. The whole thing is identified as conservation, but the intent of this again was... But the intent is 117 of it is instantly in conservation in this vote. In an easement. In the right, and the rest of it was to turn it into ball fields. But the town owns 37 acres of it. The town owns the, the whole thing. The town owns the whole thing. I right? understand that. But it says the town owned 30, the 37 acres, which was 8 acres for the gravel pit, 12 acres set aside and for 20 acres of athletic fields. So it sounds like that right there is off the conservation plate. 
I understand the whole is all owned by the town. I get that. But it, it sounds like that, that particular acreage has been earmarked for something different than conservation. Yeah, none of that's laid out on the ground. That's part of the problem with this. Too. Okay, and, and I'm not disagreeing with that, but I'm just I'm just thinking that that it sounds like there's there's a, there's, a, there's a, a set number of acres that were set aside intentionally for not conservation day one of the vote right. to be to be to be in the future turned into other avenues. So the rifle range or pistol range, whatever you want to yep. call it, is in the ball field area. Is the thing to consider. Okay. That's and that, what kind of point. That, that, that's understood. Yeah. That's understood. But that, to me, is in the, in the narrative of that discussion is under town function for now until turned over to such. Right. So the, the posting, like I was talking about where that gate is, is way far away from where the shooting is going. Okay. So that's kind of a problem. Okay. So we've, I mean, we've talked when we've talked about the range two, three, four weeks ago. It was uh, twice a year plus when there's a new hire. I'm looking over at the chief. Uh, so, so, well, can we keep it to the minimum and kind of meet in the middle of? Is there is so? It's a question. Is there some middle ground of hey, don't post it all the time. We know two or so weeks out. You decide that there's going to be. Activity. Yep, the police are going to lock that down to use it safely, post it, post it on the internet, post it on the town website, and then have the event twice a year when people get hired, uh, and then remove all the signs. Yeah, I mean, I think, this, you know, it's not up to me, but I think the no, signs are way far away from the activity, which is pretty confusing. Well, I'm sure there's, I'm just there's, there's, there's a raise a compromise. Compromise. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I think if you move that whole where you're blocking it and block the area you really need to block and make it set. clear, yeah. Then you don't have yeah. to pull signs up and down. All right, yeah. Yeah. When I was there, I never wanted down there anyway. Huh? They said, when I was there, I never wanted down there anyway. Did never wanted what down there? Well, the shooting range, because of the, just the long access road and stuff in there. The, the one at the highway garage, a little more history behind it than, it was open to the public, and public was shooting Tannerite. That's what's here in the transfer station. The current police chief and police department don't want it open to the public. That, that wouldn't happen no more. Would be posted. Mm -hmm. um, state police used to train down there. Said it was the nicest one in the state. Probably needs to be freshened up. So I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to drag up discussions that maybe have already been voted on, but I guess the I missed out did. why it, the, it, it got moved to start with. The, the, board um, did, the, the board did vote to move it down there. All right. Well, so that was, that was a little bit ago. Um, um, well, and I, I have had citizens let me know that a public range would be beneficial as well. Right. It, it would so be. I'm not, I'm not saying we should dredge things up. But <coughs> well, but... It, I mean, that, that's all, I guess, different for me, I, I, and I've, I've heard that, too. But the, the shooting, scaring the people, it wasn't, <laughs> it was people abusing Tannerite and stuff when there wasn't police presence. That's what started that whole argument about down there. Oh, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not discrediting that at all, and I, I agree. Um, but this board made the decision to move down there. Um, and again, it was because it was, it was minimal use mm -hmm. at the time. It was basically twice a year in new hires. It wasn't like they were going to go down there every other week, and you know we made a condition that they clean up after themselves and you know pick up all the the shell cases and stuff like that. We don't want to see really any evidence of it down there. So, um, just to to bring the board up to speed. I mean, that, I I don't see why we couldn't remove the signs if it's not an activity. But I actually thought we removed the one at the gate. Um, okay. Brian just told me it's still up. I was like, I, I don't recall who I had the conversation with, but I agree with this point. If we're not there and it just not take it off, it should have been taken down. I thought we took it down, so okay. my, my fault. Not and I'm assuming the outer limit ones where you guys do. Limit, I don't get why we wouldn't. It's, it's a liability. If somebody walks across the pit and you know slips in gravel and burp, you know, it's a town on the hook. Is but uh, but who put those up? We did. Okay. We did. Just yeah. I just want to know who put them up. That's all. So, but maybe the wording could be different. You know, act, active, active. Well, it's no you have to, it's legally. Right, but, no you, you, but I'm, I'm assuming that, that there is language that can be added for MSHA compliance. No, you're talking. It's just a sign. Okay. Just a sign. <laughs> In, um, that area is a fairly heavily hunted area during hunting seasons, too. Yeah. Which are accessed from multiple places. Right. You, you know, the problem is, I mean, you're on the boundary. 
this whole thing is on two different landowners' boundary. You, you got to get out. You, you really should do a site walk and go look at this thing. You are literally on the boundary. Um, I just want to point out too. Article 29 is only 20 acres. That's that's actually set aside for fields, not 37. No, but, no, no. It, it just says that. Yeah. Well, well, this is just a resident that spoke to it. Yeah. Ian that's meaningless. Mm -hmm. he, Which was the guy that was pushing for the Russell Foundation. Yeah, right. I think somebody mixed up the numbers there. I mean, it's 20 acres is all we ever knew about was for the fields, and ideally, I mean, we should spend some money and go delineate mm -hmm. those 20 acres and no. and and have two different. You know, because what, what we're showing now in the, in the town report is that whole thing is conservation land. Which, which doesn't sound accurate. Right, right. At yeah, this, yeah. It doesn't sound accurate at this point. Yeah. I think we've established it's yeah. not accurate. Yeah. So, but, okay. And while we're talking about it, my first park meeting came up how we could use more fields, and this is yeah, it, the, ten, a potential site. But we also initially, the, the, the intent was to excavate the... Sure. The, because yeah. because right. we're, we're we're out down in yeah I think it's well, recognized it's not it's not going to be this year next year but right no in, 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 the, future. in the future yeah. it is it is slated for that yes yep. yeah you know what you might I mean you might like really do the town a favor by spending a little bit on engineering to see like what makes sense to move material around to get it to that state if it is going to be a field someday because you might dig out too much in one area then have the improper material left to really even it all out. Mm -hmm. No, it's possible. Yeah. No, you know. Yeah, I don't think you're wrong with that statement. <coughs> so. All right. Um, yeah. No. I. I mean, again, this is before my time. This purchase was made. I wasn't privy to all this. Um, I didn't know as as one board member that the the. Um, the intent, the logistics, the way the Warren Arc was written mm -hmm. for that property. I just knew it was town property, and we were excavating it. That's all I really knew going into it. Um, so shame on me. Um, but again, as one board member, I, I, you know, if had I known it was any conservation, I didn't know. It just, you know, again, and and well, the Warren article should have been clearer if that was the intent. Right, and and which the Warren article is not. The Warren article was written, as he said. And then there was this whole discussion about conservation, but right. when well, you went into the voters' box, you didn't know that. Right. Well, regardless, here I mean, here we are, and, and you guys are involved, yeah. obviously. So I just think it's it's you know it was it was a failure on our communication part. And I'll, I'll I'll obviously this this transpired on an old board. You know, obviously Sherry was part of it, but it was an old older board, um, not this seated board. Um, so. So how do we keep kind of. Um you know, it seems like there's a couple tasks that the town really needs to do here, mm -hmm. you know, to be compliant with state yeah. law. I mean, how do we keep that moving? Somebody's well, got to get... I think we can move that forward. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's probably a phone call for as far as the intent to excavate. Not just a phone call. No, it's a... There's money going to be spent and everything. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, again, we got to be legal. If we're, if we're removing... If we're removing, I mean, unless it's the town's exempted. Or not. But I didn't think so. Um, then, I mean, we've got to do it. I think if we're going to be removing aggregate from there, it's so how Ray Banks active had a, is that? He had a site specific. Mm -hmm. How active is that? How active like is that? Like if we had to say, that? "Hey, we're not legal. You got to stop right now, today." What's that going to do to the town? Once, once a year is where they get their sand. Okay. Yeah. Where they get their sand once yeah. a year. And were they in there for a week and a half or so? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So. Well, then. But I think, <clears throat> but obviously, we we got to be legal if we're going to be removing. You know removing material, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's an intent to excavate, whether it's the same thing that, that you know, um, Chris and Eldon fill out, yeah, I don't know. It's an alteration of terrain. Yeah, no, AOT, it'd take, it take a minute. Okay. Yeah. So you guys got that? Yeah, I mean, know. well, we, we can discuss it. I, I, don't, I don't know what's involved in it. I, I don't. It's I mean, somebody's got to do it. Okay. and the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, probably better off hiring an engineer to just tackle it, you know. We'll take Probably going to be put out to bid because it's not going to be under 5000 bucks yeah. to do And then? Then where are you going to get it from? Property lines are marked down there, right? You guys did that. Yeah. You know, the, across the field is a little shaky. I don't think we put post up, you know, between banks and us. I thought I saw one of Jeremy's guys out there last year in the screen. And yeah, they were blazing. And I think we had one piece with it, I think it surveyed, if I remember right. Yeah, it was missing. Yeah. But the... Um, where the pit is, any pit and shooting range, that part down there. Pretty obvious. It's all blazed up. Yeah. 
The um, and then also, I mean, who's got the ball on coming up with a contract for the for the actual field maintenance? And are we comfortable? Does you, the selectman authorized years ago a zero cost, you know, agreement with? I mean, a handshake essentially with this guy. Right, right. I mean, I didn't know he was doing it on. He's I, still doing it. So I've never been down there, to be honest with you. I've, I've never even set foot off off the side of East Road, so. So do you, I mean, you want to go to law or something, Naomi, and ask for a sample contract or what they would recommend? I don't, you know, I, I mean, to me, there's no money in it on our end, but I don't know, Benji, I could be wrong. Like yeah, I, I don't, I don't. Really I don't know I just, either. I wanted the same thing when it came to timber, if there was one well, on that one or not. As somebody who feeds animals, you don't get it for free. No. Sure. Oh, no. No. I mean, the guy does put material in. He brings, I saw he spread manure out there a little bit. He does a good job paying. But, yeah. 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 So, I mean, we can, I mean, we can definitely inquire. I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, do you want us to, I mean, normally yeah, if, we deal if with If you guys could, could tackle that yeah. side of it, I, you know, and, and, and let us know what, you know, what, what transpires yeah. as far yeah. as, you know, because obviously if we're we should gonna, ask him what he's doing. Well, that's just it. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's going to be more of a, hey, how's it going? What's going on type thing more yeah. than. Sign this piece of he's paper. He's probably going to already. He's probably going to start fertilizing so, now to get a crop. Yeah. yeah, you're going to want an agreement of some sort. Oh that just yeah, I'm not saying yeah. yeah, we don't want something, but but again, don't, right. just, don't just go over there and force a piece of paper in front of him and say sign this. You know, well, find, no. out, find out what he's doing and. Yeah, no, I think we got a handle on what he's doing. Okay. It's just, uh, and then you know what that AOT. I don't know if that you know if you're going to have to show wetlands on that. I almost guess you would. So probably have to delineate oh, probably. that. Yeah, I'm sure we would. But it'd be ideal before the next cycle, someone coming in with a big excavator to flag that wetland that's right up against the excavation. He's real tight to it. Okay. Right. Cool. If I could just, yeah. just to Coda, um, I just wanted to reiterate the commission participated in a in a purchase. It was a a community activity. It was advertised and pushed by. Russell Foundation as a as a interested land uh, representing an interested landowner, um, it was a success, and I think it's still a success. But it's it's the legacy of a mixed use yeah. parcel. When one element is you know forgotten, and maybe it's a, a minor element in in some ways, but uh, you know we we were brought to the table, and and um, we just uh, appreciate the courtesy to to recognize that there are multiple. Stakeholders, yeah. I guess you use that word, um, and we we recognize, you know, you guys have a fundamental role, and we, I think, frankly, would be keen on uh, becoming a better help to the board, or the boards through the years. Um, there are times when, um, you know, frankly, I think it, it would be in the interest, town's interest in general, if. If we just got a heads up and could share a couple statements or a position or a information on on some of these um, conservation related activities, um, just be clear that commission is not making a a statement uh, you know contrary to potentially using the piece as a as a um, as a range, um, but just. Uh, yeah. Just remember that it, 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 there's also folks who would use it for other uses, and we want to make sure that those can be managed safely and yeah. with the knowledge and with the uh, information shared amongst in places where interested uh, parties could at least have had the chance to look at it if they missed it. Okay. So we're learning. Yeah. You guys are learning. We appreciate the um, you know, opportunity to spend some time with you tonight. Um, and... Uh, Hope that what could be <coughs> a, a messy situation just uh, doesn't go there, and yeah. we can keep everybody um, safely enjoying a town asset. Town property. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Andy. Thanks. Appreciate it. I I don't think you have to, but if you'd like to. Well, just to give a background of what we actually did to look into this. Um, first thing we did, we looked at RSAs. Um, what restrictions were there on it? Uh, there were none. We found you can hunt on property, which means you can shoot on property. We looked at the sh target shooting RSA, and there were certain parameters which would restrict us for doing that, because um, really what we're doing is we're target shooting. We don't have any permanent structures there, so it's not really a range. It's just we go set up targets, we shoot them, and then we go back. 
Um, nothing in that. We looked, of course, at the Conservation Committee's website. They've got a list of things to contact them on, which would be violations. We didn't hit any of that. Uh, we looked at, you know, the property lines were mentioned. We measured out houses because we can't be within 300 feet of any house. We're 2,800 feet away. Of course, we're 20 to 30 feet below ground, so we have no ricochet. The property line wouldn't be... Wouldn't yeah, be it's not relevant. Um, for, for you anyways. Right. right. Um, so we, we hit all our blocks, plus Sergeant Frisbee let me know that he had reached out to the Conservation Committee prior on a Farron, Farron Pond incident uh, where somebody was discharging a Farron on a firearm or something like that, and um, didn't get a response. So we weren't seeing the concern, so we didn't reach out any further. That's why we went with you guys. So we didn't see any boxes okay. where we needed to. No, I, I, I think it's it's us anyways. You, we approved you guys to do it. So. Yep, and I, I would highly recommend keeping the trespassing signs up because they're on just the perimeter well, of I'm the pit. That, I'm thinking that there might be need more needed there if. if we got, I think we got ten. Well, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying just the no trespassing. Oh, m open mind. Open mind. Yeah, M, we, M we, MSHA something. A what? MSHA, Mine Safety Health Administration. Okay. Yeah, you have to fill me in on that one. It's MSHA. MSHA. Yeah, M S H A. They they regulate like gravel pits and stuff like that. Well, if you tell me what you want on signs, well, I get some work. I don't know if this cool. if this should be more more instead of just a no trespass. Right. It, it'd be something to involve with the mining aspect of it. That's all. Okay. It's yeah, not, we're just it's trying not really to really mining. It's it's. Do, obviously, you don't want to get anybody get hurt. No, I agree. Pit. Yeah, fall off the fall off the face, and that'd be bad. So. Yeah. So, like I said, I thought we had moved the other sign because I, I heard the concern prior. I moved one uh, no trespass sign after talking to uh, you on the phone, um, but the sign remaining notifies persons when the flag is raised that there's active shooting going on. Okay. So, It's just the most convenient place to put it. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because it's right there. You can attach it to it. My understanding was uh, that the access route was town owned. I didn't. I just looked at access GIS. It says owner, town of where. Okay. All right. That's it. All right. Thank you, Conservation Commission. Appreciate you coming by. On to the manifest, which we do have. We do have all the signatures for that, by the way. I know. Steve. If, I mean, it's got to have something to it. I would assume. What? The gate. The gate that we that we have established there, or is. I don't. Know. No, it's not a boundary. It's just keep out gate. That's all. Yeah, it's not like a boundary gate. Yeah, that's. I think that's what it's trying to prevent wheeled vehicles. So, yeah. All right. Uh, I'm gonna order the treasurer to sign payroll accounts payables check date April 20th, 2023, it's including the following manifest: a payroll manifest of sixty-eight thousand seven hundred ninety-seven dollars and twenty-one cents for weekly payroll, accounts payable of twenty thousand six hundred eighty-four dollars and thirty-two cents. Ware School District for 400000 and John Stark for 250000 for a total of $739,451.53. Is there a second? Second. Move and second in all in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay, brings us to the minutes. And there was, there was a few. Six, Three sets. Three sets. You got to go back to December 19th. I wasn't even here for them. So who was that? <laughs> that door's going to stay open. They can yeah. take their conversation because yeah. it's supposed to be open to the public. All right. I know I downloaded that a long time ago, but. <clears throat> you all, 2020. What was it? December what? 19. There it is. Normally you can, can you? There's two of you. Huh? Kevin's not here. Yeah, and a, but is it, it? We did it before. I, th I thought it was a. I mean, it's up to the board members. A quorum if they of attendees. I thought it was a quorum of attendees, though. We, I thought we determined that. We did an approval with two and three abstain. How are you going to do two and two? 
I'm assuming these two are going to abstain. Yeah, we did th we did that before I'm for one where yeah, yeah, when Sherry was out, it was. I was out in December. So that's I only think. Ricky. There you go. Ricky. Yeah, so I'd only I only we can. I don't know that you can with one. With one, yeah. So I, I think you got it. We'll move on and do. Yeah. So we'll. We'll have to wait till Kevin gets back for that one. <coughs> All right. Uh, so that brings us to which ones? Third, uh, April third. April third. There. Okay. All right. April third. Page one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to move to approve the April 3rd as written. Second. Move second in all in favor? Yes. Yes. And then the tenth. Tenth. Just a second. Okay. Download that one too. Yes. Okay. Page one. Hey, Steve. Can you guys can, can you guys move out somewhere else? Thank you. Uh, page one. Two. Three. Four, five, and six. I'll move to approve the April 10th as written. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. <coughs> you go with the 10th, the 3rd and the 10th? What's that? Yeah. Okay. So, being all in favor. All right, your report. Alright, here you go. Nope. Ta -da. Change the format around a little bit because it's easier maybe. Hopefully everybody will agree. I just broke it up by department. Yep. And then just it's, it's sometimes been instead of bouncing around. So under the DPW, um, Jason and I still have to finalize that road bond policy um, and we'll get to it. Um, the River Road Bridge, I sent you guys some stuff. Um, back when we first started this um, process about the whole needle scaling and things like that, mm -hmm. Jacobs, um, we didn't have a contract with Jacobs. Oh, okay. And so we're to a point now that we're looking to have, I guess, half the bridge has been done, but they need an inspection. Oh. And Jason, um, Tom said to Jason, well, I never got it and I never got the contract back. So Jason reached out to me Friday, and it ended up getting in my spam. But So I have with us the professional service agreement for the structural steel repairs of the bridge, okay. um, and it's for a lump sum of 36000 And um, did you guys have your copies? Yep. So it's a two-part. So we're looking to sign the, our authorized me to sign the contract for the engineer and then Jason had put out bids for a welder and we only ever got one person um, and we're not ready for that yet because after the inspection uh, if this gets signed then Tom will come out tomorrow then from there he puts together professional drawings mm -hmm. as to what we need to buy for steel yep then we would put have the welder weld the steel yep so um, I guess the most cr critical part would be this agreement for, um, yeah. for Jacobs. The welder, um, Jason has stayed in touch with him back and forth. So this gentleman knows we're not ready yet. And he's holding the pricing. He's holding, yes. Okay. That's good. So um, there is, whether Ricky signed it or I signed it or whatever, I just need to let Jason know tonight so that Tom can come in the morning if, so we, they're ready, and then they're going to move to the other side. Okay. But Tom will at least be able to go in the lift and see what's been done and ready to be done. Right. Right. And this is it. What? And this would come out of the money that's already been set aside. This is it. This, this, this would come out of the yeah. fund, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. a bridge. bridge fund, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what it's called, but there's a capital reserve fund for yeah. the bridge money. Right. 
Right, and this was this was a, a decision that the board made uh, to go this route to get it back to. It's not going to be unrated. For yeah. it's going to be unrated. It should be when we're okay. done. But that's only going to get us till twenty. Twenty twenty six. Twenty six, because they moved us up. Right. In twenty twenty six to, right. um, and the money is there to do the replacement. Right. So we're going to replace the bridge still in twenty twenty six, but that's got eighty percent funding coming from the state. Okay. To replace the bridge. But this will get it so that right now there's only a six ton limit. Right. This will remove that six ton limit, put it back to unrated for three years, and then we hope to get three we years. Hope to get three there's years no out guarantee. Of it. Right. Okay. But, but that and the but the money in the bridge fund was for replacement, and we're just going to pull it's out of it to do this. Reconstruction and replacement. Yes. Okay. Right. When we wrote the article. Right. We put four twenty away for our. Right. 20 but we also down got money. We also got an additional. But we got a block grant. Two hundred and something. Yeah. From and there's more money in another round of block grants coming yeah. as well. There was a specific block grant that was that was. We accepted it on September 26th. Right. There was one for road, and then there was one so for the So this 36000 this year buys us a few more years to pull in more money for replacement. This buys us phase two. This buys us phase two. He's still going to do the final inspections and everything when done. Okay. Right. This is to get him to do the shop drawing so we can order the metal yeah. so the guy can weld on the well, plates. And then the guy yeah. welds on it, and then sure. this, this guy will, will get sent to the state and say, you know, I give it the I give it the okay yeah. to meet your standards. Somebody, some engineer person has to have it to submit to the the drawings to the state. Right, okay. which is this guy. So, and he just welds on what he's told to weld on. Right, and this gentleman's just going to weld for a flat fee, and if it goes beyond the three weeks, he's ninety bucks. It's an ninety dollars an hour, but we couldn't we can't get anybody else to to weld. Yeah. Right. So, um, I again, this is going to remove that six ton limit. It's it's one more step towards it, so. Getting closer. Right. So you can do it one of two ways. You can authorize the chairman to sign. You can authorize me to sign. However you guys want to do it. I saw Naomi's name in here somewhere. So yeah, it's right at the top. It. Right at the top of the first page. I, yeah, I thought it was more formal than that. Oh, it could have been. Oh. I might be wrong. Enough. I don't see it anywhere for okay. it. <coughs> so, any other discussion from the board? No? Nope. Okay. Um, I guess I'll move to have the town administrator sign the professional services agreement with Jacobs Engineering Firm for the amount of 36000 for um, to come from the... Um, Bridge Reconstruction Fund for the intent of um, uh, engineering services on the River Road Bridge. Is there a second? Phase two. For phase two. Okay. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Thank you. You want to hold on the welder for now? or yeah, hold on the, As long as he's good with it, we'll hold on. We're, yeah. yeah, we're fine with that. Um, and when's the last time Jason reached out to him? I talked to Jason on Friday because that's when he tried to call and schedule with Tom. Okay. Tom said, I don't have a contract. So then I said to Jay, I said, at the same time, should we do the welder? But the welder's outdated. And he said that he had only talked to him a few days ago. I don't know the exact yeah. amount of days. And he knows that he's waiting for us to do our part first. Okay. I can reach so, out. Yeah, I, if, I if somebody could just let him know, hey, I know. I know. we've made this. It was up Thursday. He didn't know what was happening. Okay, I'll reach out to him. I know him. I don't know any. I've, I've known him yeah, for. I just don't want to leave him hanging yeah. when we've made a decision. I've known him for 20 plus years. So. Okay. Um, and then you all see that Jason had sent you guys his April report. Yep. Um, restructuring. I know what I put here is that we have to wait till we finalize. Hopefully the 24th we can do that and then talk about what we're going to do as far as mm -hmm. if you're going to restructure and what you're going to do. Yep. Um, the DPW staffing as of Friday, we received a resignation from, do we say it? Yeah, it's given, I guess. It's in writing. From Hobart. Um, he's given his two weeks notice. He'll be leaving. Um, and then there's a rumor that somebody else is going to be leaving as well. Um, the that, was that anticipated? The, I think this one, I think Hobart's was. I don't know. About the one that sure. we've heard for a rumor, yeah. but I don't He'd know. He'd stuck out just to help in the 
the winter. So yeah. Okay. He was good he's got, about that. He's retiring, right? Retiring. So. Yeah. My thing's over. Yeah, I don't. It just said that it, it said that he would remain on call for emergencies if the board would consider that a viable option due to the extreme short staffing. But I guess that's up to Jason if you need something. Yeah, if Jason, yeah, that's up to Jason. Um, the roadside mower for the DPW as well as the 10 wheel truck and equipment bids have both been put out. Okay. They're due back on 428. Um, at 9 o'clock, you're going to see this down through. Beth's got something out, so your May 1st meeting will be a busy one. Um, you heard the update from the police department for the radio. All the MOUs have been sent to Mark Broth, and I've confirmed a meeting for 518, which is May 18th, which is a Thursday yep. at 630. Uh, the chief touched upon the ACO. Just so we don't lose track of things, I just broke the next one down to park and rec which mm -hmm. um we have to hire the staff which is the email that you received you need to make a motion i'm not sure if you want to list them or how you're going to do it there's how many is there no you have to hire the other ones back too. all of them too when yeah i was gonna say there's a whole list there that came from an email i'll move that we hire the um list stated on the email from Janine to Beth Rouse on April 4th at 6 12 p.m. Um, with posted um, rates um, attached to in each individual. Is there a second? Can I discuss briefly yep. is it so should we include this like in the minutes of this meeting? Oh, we I know can. we don't want to read them all out, but I don't. See I mean, I don't mind just cutting and pasting. Yeah, yeah we, we, can, just, we can definitely do that. Just to avoid, yeah. you know, a 91A or something. Yeah, we, yeah. we can definitely put it in the yeah. minutes. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Just well, be I can just paste. highlight right. and stick yeah. it yeah. in there. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. So, is there a second? Yeah, I'll second it. Move and second it. All in favor? Yes. Yes. And then she, uh, Jeanine already took this th thunder as well. She talked about the tennis courts. Mm -hmm. um, she talked about Chase Park hours and the fee schedule. She talked about Bolton Field, um, boat ramps, and boat ramps we talked about. That's okay. I just leave, I put them on here just so we don't lose track, and I broke them down. I felt it easier by department. It is a two-pager now if you see the backside. Um, then conservation we did talk about, but the 487 North Stark, um as you know, the positive came back from asbestos. That's the piece that we purchased, and now quotes need to be obtained to for asbestos remediation. Mm -hmm. You're also going to see that below, because at the same time we did the piece on Buzzle Hill Road where the that came back work positive. Is, that came back positive as well. So the state has a list of asbestos remediation companies contractors. I just got to get out to them and and see. Um, joint loss, as again, we're waiting for the DPW and fire chief because. They filled some of those spots. Mm -hmm. Forest Room Cleaning Services is a template I just have to finish. Um, Collins Cemetery in Salem. I'm not sure if you're aware of this one or not. I've breezed over it a couple times. So the Collins Cemetery is just past the Chase Park right-hand side before the road curves. Okay. Um, that is a private cemetery. Currently. And now the families come forward and would like us to take care of it. Okay. So there's a lot of process that goes with it. You have to put ads in the paper for any air that might come forward. Um, we have a resident that will work with us. She's a retired from the AG's office, charitable funds. She's very knowledgeable about the cemetery yeah. trustees and what it takes. But it's something that it's not ours right now. I guess it, at some point the family doesn't want to do it anymore. But it's nothing we're going to put up here because we have a lot of other things to put up there first. Um, so the hospitality rental ordinance that was tabled um, I'm not sure if it'll be resubmitted but again we leave it on here so the cemeteries I was able to reach out to um, this guy by the name of Keith Racine I've been trying to find him for the winter he is Cornerstone Cemetery Services he's going to come to my office at 7 o'clock on 426 he's going to go over some of the maps and then we're actually going to take a field trip just to show him how because on the maps we have just squares there's no distances there's no nothing so i want to know when people want to buy a lot how and what i can sell them if i don't know where it is on the ground on collins 
No, no, no. Oh. That we've moved on from Collins. These oh. are. This is yeah. um, the oh, ones. Yeah. Okay. This is the ones because you're gonna have some burials coming up soon. Oh yeah. Just think that's yeah. the ones yeah. we have the to. Ground, the ground's with. unfrozen, so. Right. So um, it'll be interesting, and I will obviously share with you in May when what he has to say and what we can do. The solid waste ordinance. Um, just food for thought. I did come up with four or five towns. Would you that have one of them was a 22 ordinance? Ooh. So I'd happily share those. And this is that one that was done in '92 that we can't find a signed one. Right. Where we're having it on May 15th. Is it something that I could get to you right away? You guys could look at it, and maybe that could be a May 8th work session so that we could be prepared for I don't see why and, not. and knock it out when we knock out the fee schedule. If we need to add things to it, that would probably be the time. I'm just saying I can't, we could advertise, but should we hold off is what I'm asking you. I'm just thinking while you're doing a public hearing for the transfer station is for fees. This goes hand in hand. We have a public hearing over it. Well, yeah, exactly. I definitely want to, but I mean, we could put it in there tentatively, I guess. All right. Uh, well, it doesn't have, I just want us to pick a date. Again, it's on here for reason. Tentatively, and, and we, we, review, we review what we're provided, and then if, if it's something we want to add, subtract, et cetera, then we do it at that work session. Sure. I don't see why not. And we'll have enough time for Naomi or whomever to put that together in time for public hearing? I think so. In one week? We should be able to. Okay. Yeah. I, can't I mean, we could add, I mean, uh, let's, let's play it by ear. I'll yeah. see what you guys, if yeah. you think it's too in-depth, we won't, we'll draw back. Okay. Can we go to the back side? Um, I, I'm just asking, 706, we heard from today, the owners have been notified that they are welcome to come look at the file. Do you still need counsel? I, th I think it's a closed case on this board's aspect. I really do. I think, I think we're, we're done with it well, as a board. I, I look at that. That was sold over two years ago. And I don't think we ought to spend money, ta tax money on council. Crazy, but no, I don't bother with it. I Good. Think it's no, I think I think we're done with it as a board. Okay, yeah. I'll just email her before I leave yep. tonight and tell her yep. not to I do think anything we're done. because she's due yeah. back on Wednesday. Yeah, no, I, I think we're done. Yeah, yeah. myself. Okay. So. Um, DPW police, you have set for the 424 ethics committee. Yep. Their first meeting's been set for this Wednesday at seven in here. Okay. RFP for auditing. Every year we. Put out for auditing services every three years it's up for contract again so Beth put that out um, for the 28th now preambulation um, Salem and I talked a little bit today about preambulation um, preambulation Sherry we went on a walk too so preambulation is something that you have to go and I, I read that email and I that doesn't look right we, because we I there. remember Keith going out. I remember Sherry going out. Yeah, we went out. And we did. Yeah. So what we did in Boston. they telling but, you that they haven't been there since '08. We actually there's a report in here for 2015. Well, I was gonna say because I thought Keith went out with Fred. Remember, I thought Keith took, I thought I, th I thought Keith took his kids out and they went out and did. They did Goffstown, I thought. Oh, I thought I thought they were out there with Fred. Mm. I could have sworn. So I guess um, it's very interesting. Um, it's, it's kind of cool, um, I thought when we went out Depending in New Boston. Depending when we set that, yeah. I'd be happy to go on that again. Um, I will take the wife and kids and perambulate all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I, I, and again, and, and that's what Keith did, he took his, I remember he took his kids out. Yeah. And, yeah, and he I did it with him, and Fred, Fred was a, a, a yeah. wealth Keith of knowledge, and, yeah, and right. Keith came, uh, I, cause I remember Keith, Keith came back, he was, he was yeah. over the moon, he thought it was great, uh, you know. They got pictures and, and yeah. all that. And yeah. So that's where I saw 08. I'm like, eh, that doesn't sound familiar. Yeah, so I was you're right. It was Keith and it was 2015. Yeah. So my, my point of all of it is if I can use kind of a the same letter they used as far as, because it's the responsibility of the older town to Are we older? reach out yeah. to the younger town. And How do you get that? so, so Goff sounds the oldest. They're in 1761. New Boston, 1763. We're 1764. Oh. Dunbarton and Hopkins are 1765. Henniker 1768. Francistown, 1772. And Deering, 1774. So my um, thought is, if we send out a letter, as I indicated on my report, that if I sent out a letter, let's do them all. And done them in 2023, and then it's easy to remember. You got to do them in 30. Yeah, 
because we just did the other the where in New Boston line last year. No, you didn't. You where didn't New know? Boston was done in thirteen. No, no. You and you oh. and uh, there's pictures of you and Rodney in thirteen. No, it wasn't thirteen. I'm just telling you. I wasn't on the board in thirteen. Okay. Then. I do remember you talking about going down there. Eighteen. Eighteen. Sorry. Yeah. Eighteen. It was yeah. eighteen. Yeah. My yeah. typo. Yeah. Typo. Eighteen. I, I knew it wasn't. But it wasn't last year. It was five years ago. Think of that, five years ago. Time years. I thought it was a couple years ago. <laughs> couple. So two. I think if, I mean, if you guys are takers, I think Salem, your kids would love it. Yeah, I think Keith's they would too, did. really. Keith's I did, really I did, yeah. enjoyed it. Um, so maybe little let the, nature. Let the ticks die down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a date anyway for this, right? No, no. I just, so we're going to wait for is, ticks to get Is it going to be Fred again? Yeah. 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 Fred's a, he's a wealth of knowledge. Cool. He really is. Yeah. So I'll let them know that I have two and just see what we're looking at for time frame. Okay. Um, Before the be black cool. flies. And then the other thing is, if you're okay with it, I'll send it to our younger siblings mm -hmm. and see if they want to have a walkabout, too. Some of them haven't been done since 97. Probably not a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. Our younger siblings, I like that. I'm just telling you, we're the oldest one. No, Towns. we're third oldest. Young, younger siblings. We're third oldest. Um, and then I'm off tomorrow, and then I will going to be off Thursday and Friday for um, to help Dad's services this weekend. So. Okay. Um, then um, I figured I'd add my correspondence here in case I forgot. So you guys got the auction letter if we need anything to go. Um, the, everybody, the department heads got it as well. Mm -hmm. So if we have anything to go, which the dog car is a no right now. Correct. And the Glocks were going to be sold outside. Correct. Okay. Through the feds. Yeah. Uh, through that and then, federal um, path. FFL. I believe I forwarded you the letter from the concerned residents. Yes. It had to do with the, it wasn't signed, it just said concerned residents. Oh yes, I remember that, yes. It had to do with um, the, talked about to balance the integrity between the residents and the businesses. There's a concern that when proposed commercial projects are agreed to, with conditions that no conditions in which the town have authority to ensure that the conditions are followed. Um, it was a two-page, and it gave some specifics as to roughly in the North Ware Village, uh, I'm sorry, North Riverdale area. Um, I guess, I don't know who I'm supposed to reply to, because well, it just says residents. I don't think you have to, because it's not. They did but ask, I can pass they it did off ask to that we read it oh, and it, include it in the minutes. Do you want me to read it in the minutes? I mean, somebody else want to read it? I don't mind reading it. Yeah, go ahead and read Just, it. It's the least we could do. I'll start yeah. coughing. All right, go ahead. All right. Dear Select Board, regarding the integrity balance between residents and businesses in the town of Ware, there is a concern that when proposed commercial projects are agreed to by the planning board with the following conditions, quote, there are no conditions by which the town acts with its authority to ensure that the conditions are followed. How is it that agreements of operation are monitored and enforced from year to year and that they don't get forgotten and buried in a file somewhere? Please review the conditions by which the planning board approved Whitetail commercial development. Condi condition number 13, no overnight outside storage of any kind excluding registered and inspected vehicles. Where is the oversight and enforcement of this condition? Condition number 16, condo documents must be revised then approved by town council. This condition should be transparent and a part of the public record. The residents of Ware should have public access to the Whitetail development commercial development condo documents as approved by the town council. Additionally, is Whitetail Commercial Development allowed to function as a parking lot, a place for 18-wheelers to park overnight and leave each morning at 5 a.m. and return to park each weekday? How to enforce this is a concern. Whitetail Commercial Development has 20 conditions by which the Planning Board granted approval to operate. Is the Select Board aware of them? How is it that all commercial and industrial developments approved by the Town of Ware's Planning Board, quote, with conditions, are monitored and reported on routinely for as long as these businesses exist? How is it that the select board, newly elected or not, take on the responsibility of knowing how the businesses are supposed to behave and take action when needed, as needed, to release the citizens from having to police their neighbors, file former com formal complaints, and risk retaliation? Your attention is also needed regarding the precedence that the town appears to be allowing for a long time an accumulation of construction vehicles has been parked day in and day out at the end of the North Riverdale Road neighborhood. Is this permissible? Can we all do this and park on the town's buffer without the need to use a driveway? Please read and include this letter of concern in the meeting minutes. Thank you, resident of Ware. Thank you, Priscilla. 
Thank you. All right, I'm gonna move down to building maintenance. Um, the bath bathroom renovations, Kevin and I went over on Friday the 14th. Um, there was just a couple little things with the punch list. Um, Kevin picked up on them quite nicely. That, um, and the hand rail wasn't put back on. Just, just little things. Um, they said they would have it completed by the end of the week. The um, building fill-in gentleman that we have, I'll probably just send over and make sure it's done. Um, they assured me it would be done by the 21st, but honestly, I think you're going to be surprised when you look at it. It came out really nice. <coughs> um, the library chimney, I asked Clay when he was in the other day. He said he has got him on the schedule, but he couldn't remember the date. Okay. So it, it's he did reach out. Um, the Riverdale Road, I just need to get it in front of the planning and zoning. That's that little piece, Benji, that when you were here that we got we got him find Mr. Do so, I think. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so he's agreed to give up the little corner there so that we can make a, back, a better make it approach. Better. Yeah. Um, it takes the zoning because it's going to make it more non-conforming. <laughs> it's more non-conforming. Yeah. Not and then it's got to go to the it's got to go to the planning board because we're adding a, it's a lot line adjustment mm -hmm. but it takes two parties. Solar, um, we've given them to come in and see what they're up to for all of their projects on May first. Um, the, I haven't seen the copper cap. Did they come yet? No, I called them back. Uh, and they so they haven't. No, neither have been done yet, right? No, and there's no there's no piece of metal missing on the barn roof. The piece it was slid down. Is that still? Is it off the building now? No, it's there. There's nothing slid off. I think what happened was it it folded back, and then the wind caught it, and folded it back down again. That loose oh. piece. But I was going to say because I went by this winter comes. and it was slid down. Like it was tacked on one corner, but slid. Yeah, it's back where it's back in position. I don't know how. That's it amazing. That's fine. It. We'll take right. it. Okay, and then I just put on here so we didn't forget. We went back and forth last time about the generator. Yeah. So in, at the end of twenty two, you did put fifteen thousand dollars for the generator. Yeah, I thought we and did. And then um, we're going to have the HVAC looked at in the basement, and that appointment's been made for five eleven at eleven. Yeah. To look at the, we talked about the. Um, down in the storage area there to have yeah, I call the climate it control. Yeah. Climate control. I do have, um, I'm going to pass down the table. You guys, I cleaned up the copy of the town administrator's job description. Okay. Um, and then there was an oath of office that Maureen had handed me that um, he just came in this year. He's been on the planning board for a year, but she swore him in. Um, is, there, is there more? Oh. And then I think, I, oh, I, think I think that's the one we're going to sign this one, right? Yeah, I think we're going to sign this one. Oh, we're signing yeah, this one. Yeah, right? yeah, I cleaned it up and I put the date on it as April 10th because that's when we agreed yeah. on it, yep. which was last week. And all I was going to do was clean it up and make a copy. Okay. And what, what was cleaning it up? It was just taking draft through the middle. That's all I was okay. to take out. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I had to take out. Um, then we received an email from. A, Employee, do you want to talk about that non-public? I didn't, or do you want to leave that alone for now? You may not all have gotten it. All right, I'll ship it. I'll send it to you for now. Yeah, send it to us. You can talk about it another time. That's all I have to offer you. you know, sorry. Right. Uh, can the, we? Uh, the generator. Um, I don't know what if there was a watt size or anything. Looking at, I know when we built the new highway garage, I offered to give the old one that worked fine here building inspector at the time I wanted a bigger one but that's 14,000 well that's big enough that's plenty this is only 5,500 right so I didn't yeah. that came from the old radio tower site this maybe, one is yeah 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 so it, I that one down that, there sat now since when I built the highway garage maybe things are seized up is it propane? It's, it's propane okay and it ran the highway garage fine the, the old one didn't run the air compressor when it kicked on Right. No. Anyway, yeah, because there's a manual transfer switch downstairs in the electrical room, and basically the entire basement is on it. Yeah. That's about it. So. Because so, there, there Jason. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, 14 would be plenty. But you still have the port pad, right? Yeah, we got a port yeah. pad. Yeah, we definitely got a port pad because that little hut out there ain't. It's just in stone. Right. Yeah. So. Right. It had to set. It always sat under cover, but it had set for three or four months in the entrance salt sand base. So I don't know. If 
hard bearing might have rusted yeah. up or not. It might yeah. take a few hundred dollars of service. Yeah. I don't care if you used it or not. If Jason has a use for it somewhere else down that yeah. transfer station, I'm just saying the offer yeah. was made and no, at the fine. time there was an interest. But <laughs> What's the rough size of it, you know? I mean, it's dimensions. Would it, I mean, would it fit out here yeah. size-wise? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, All right. So thank you. I'll check with Jason on that one. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, we've been doing exit interviews for everybody. He's only seen one since I've been here. Somebody mentioned that. Well, one me. happened the night that I couldn't come from the PD. Yep, we did one for the PD. We did one for DPW. the last DPW. Um, one that went out. Um, one that they got rid of didn't right. leave. They fired. Right. So we didn't talk to them. No, we didn't, we didn't ask them. Right. But if they're leaving on their own will, we, we want to. Right. Which is why I'll schedule. I mean, they can always turn us down, too. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's voluntary. Yeah. But, yeah, we, we definitely want to hear the good, the bad, and the ugly. And that's the intention of it. Yeah. So. I can schedule that. Yep. Like I think I said, the, build, the build inspector, he's gone, right? Yeah. We talked to he him more or now? less retired. Oh, he well, did? Okay. He, he gave his notice till the end of the month and then pulled it short by a week and a half because uh -huh. he had medical issues. Oh, uh -huh. right. So, I didn't know what so the, I he didn't had, ask no question. No, he came to me and said he had to cut it short because he had some personal medical things going on and he wasn't going to be able to stay. So. Okay. I mean, I can call him to come back. No, no, I didn't, I didn't know that he had medical stuff. Can we talk about the letter real quick? The, uh, the anonymous one that I just read? Sure. Because um, I think it is kind of a fair question of how do we make sure some of this stuff isn't forgotten. So I, I believe that, that that, again, this is my own thought process of, of the, 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 it leaves the planning board and goes to the building department. In code enforcement, they, they both get it and split it. Um, and then it would roll back to the code enforcement, um, who is Tony. Right. Right. Who is part time? Okay. Um, but it would be in it would be in his. Yeah, this was long before Tony. Right. Oh, yeah. And this this all went in before we had Tony, and, okay. and it, this is in Tony's house. Okay. So to respond to this person, they should talk to Tony if they have issues. Correct. Okay. I would, yes. I would, yeah. think, so, I would think that that would Just be the, to, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that would be the camera. That would be the correct <laughs> yeah. T T Sawyer where yeah, where dot an inch dot gov. Okay. And I'll share. I'll give him the copy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know what he's. I know what the concern is. And speaking of uh, in the end of North Riverdale, you can't miss it when you drive by one fourteen. Yeah. There's quite a bit of uh, collection oh. stuff. That there. that that's different though. That's that, different than that's the whitetail development. Yes. Right. Right. But it was mentioned. I think there. it was two. Yeah. It was, it was two it was, different things. It was oh, two different things. I, that was I thought here. that was being put on whitetail development to storage. No, 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 no. It's two different. I know it's two different entities. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's but. at the end that you can't miss. I saw that, but I don't. Yeah. That was oh, one. The only thing I didn't know. Yeah. It, yeah, there, there was a bunch of mentions of whitetail. Yeah. Is that are those yours or are those extras? Those must be extras. No. Okay. So okay. Okay. that would yep. make sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. You got more? No one. Refer to that. Um, Correspondence yeah, on yep. the business. Uh, we had somebody. At, so these are kind of entwined. Like I guess none of us were getting emails today. But no. You think you've got that solved? I'm going to solve it because I, as I said, I don't like to answer an encrypted email. Okay. And I don't, I mean, I, and then it could be take off from there. So I need to call him and say, was that, walk what do me, I need walk to Walk me do? through what happened here. Because yeah. they're supposed to provide you with instructions. That was the whole idea. And if that's open so I can, but you're all supposed to get them. So mm -hmm. how are you supposed to know? But I don't know that I completed my end. Okay. So the, the part I want to close the loop on is sure. are there any what I just want to make sure we get all the emails that we missed so when did it drop off and yeah, well, I, th I think the last one I got was Friday Friday yeah that but it was right. mid um, I, I didn't get anything else. so <coughs> I sent you stuff Friday afternoon and I can go through my sent and see what you okay. sent because I would have been the one sending you stuff yeah um, and I'd be happy to give you copies and and as I said to you guys when I I'll just throw hard copies in your box. That works out. Like I did with Chase Park. Yeah. The, la the last one up in Friday. Because uh, I came in Friday. Yeah. yeah. The last I, one I, I... Yeah, all the, the emails Jason sent. Jason sent one today at 2. Uh, I thought it was Chase one... Chase Park. Yeah, I didn't get that. Because he had, sent, he had sent his status update, and I never got that. In April? Okay. So I need to check mine and Jason's for the, Friday. The last one I got was from... You April fourteenth at three twenty-two. 
Okay. Well, and what did they send you? And that was that was in, uh, including us on a email to the union. About the date. About the date, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have that one? Uh, yes. Okay. So, so it stopped at like 320? Yeah, like 320 but back on, at, on the 14th. So I'm getting those, but then, yeah, the one Jason sent, he said he tried to send it Tuesday, last Tuesday. So and I didn't get it. Six to eight. Yeah, I didn't yeah, get I didn't it. Get so, so just really broadly, there are serious issues with our email. And when we're trying to get... Because I got his report, and I got his April update. But that was on the second time he sent it? That was Friday? I think it said he thought he sent it. I don't okay. think he did. Um, yeah. Didn't he say, I thought I sent this out? Yeah, he may have, yeah. And then April 14th, we got an email from him first thing in the morning with his April report. Mm -hmm. Right, because that's, is, that what does that say? Is that the one that said he thought he sent it? No, uh, yeah, I got it twice. Yeah, I got actually. two, two, I got two of them on the 14th. Yeah, I got Friday the same morning. thing. Yep. Because. I tried to send this over to, on Tuesday. It says it right in the email. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So he thought he did. Well, I mean, it's different. It's it's. If he, he tried to send it and we never got it, that's right. a problem. Yeah. Yeah, that was coming from his town account too. So. And then, I mean, I've I've talked about it before, but just being able to have access to an actual sendable, because my, I mean, with with everything getting relayed to our personal email addresses, mm -hmm. I, I before March thirteenth or the March twentieth was the first meeting. I had like four emails that I kept in my inbox, and now it's just dozens and dozens and dozens in my personal email. Yeah, I've got folders set aside. I've got, I've got folders yeah. set aside because of it, yeah. But, no, you know, I mean, you're I not mean, wrong. it just shouldn't be like that. Well, we, we <laughs> oh, for, I, I mean, if we're going to Office 365, it should be $4 a month to give everybody, at least at this table, their own email. And, yeah. and four dollars per subscription? $4 per user per month. So $250 okay. a year for this board. Yeah. Okay. To have, you know, fully auditable, fully separate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, th and that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. I just, again, it's, we can, we can go that route. We're just, we gotta, No, no, we are going to. Yeah, yeah it's just, yeah. we're again, moving that way. Yeah, we, in, so, in, like, in it's already been a month, and. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're. It worked for a while, but now. Yeah. It's, it's flaky, and we've only got 12 months of this board, and we're through one of them. I mean. Yeah. No, it's fine. I just, I worry, you know, who else is sending us anonymous things or even worse, named things, and we're just not seeing them. Right. Well, I know the chief, um, I've seen a couple being copied on that he sent mm -hmm. to the, just the three. Mm -hmm. You, yours two worked, but he just sent it to the three of you because he got bounced back. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Right. All right. We're working on it. Yeah. I just, I wish I understood it better, but I don't. And like I said, I don't like. So I'm, yeah. I'm, email, I'm happy to do, <laughs> take point on any of that. Okay. That is my bread and butter. All right, cool. Um, and we did have a question from somebody at the tail end of the 91A request about the, why is the domain changing? Why is what? I explained that to the last time. Uh, where well, where .nh.gov yeah, is just, not owned by us. I'm just saying it was... The, the citizen made a 91A request. Uh, you asked for a couple of months to mm -hmm. respond to that, and he asked, what's going Like, why are we changing domain? And he had not yet gotten a response. Oh, okay. So I I'm see. just saying. I stated oh. it. I didn't reply to him. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we can reply to him. Yeah. That's fine. Yep. No, I can do that. Okay. That's it for me. Yep. Okay. Anybody else have anything they'd like to speak to? Uh, I just, can I just, so I'll reply, but you saw what happened in one that I replied to. I kept getting another and getting another and getting another. Yeah. With, can you ask one more time? Can you ask one more time? Can you can ask you, one yeah. more time? Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just compounds it. And we, we really can't have that. If, if, if there's a 91A, it's, it's, there's, I th the, I there's do, a scope. I think it's reasonable when the response is going to be two months to say, well, hold on a minute. Well, right. Like, why, 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 why? No, no, I understand that. What I'm saying is, is, but. I, I, I get it on the, it's closed. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. we'll hold on one more thing. That, that's why. I get I, that. We need to okay. avoid that. All right, that's, that's what, what yeah. I'm talking That's yeah. what I'm saying. We need to avoid that yeah. stuff. You know, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Once right. the initial request has been fulfilled, yep. you know. Open we, another one. Yeah, open like, Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. We can't just say, oh, by yep. the way, no, oh, I'm by the you. way. Yeah, that, that's got to stop. Okay. Yep. okay. Sorry, Sherry. No. Uh, <coughs> um, wasn't it a year or so ago that the state told you you couldn't touch the pond down here with the beaver dam? Mm -mm. No. 
They told me that I could do anything I wanted with it. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was something that said no. we couldn't do I got turned in for it, yeah. I guess. I remember that, and yeah. they came out and visited me there, and I asked them to come with me and visit me at the inner, I call it the intersection, but the intersection of Shady Hill and Hodgdon and yeah. Thorn yeah. Lake. And, yeah, that Bevo. And yeah. they told me that it, there's nothing wrong with yeah. controlling the water. Okay. Yeah. It raises contention with the certain residents right. yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. yeah no but yeah I, I do remember that that we went through that I, the yeah, whole I just wanted to make sure mm. what it was yeah. I remembered some of it but I it did go back and forth yeah there was, there was a time when you didn't want to touch it and then the state said yeah we'll take it and then it was well, well the state, state do something and then no you yeah took care unfortunately of it. the state was taking care of it and we then we had uh, a resident come to the board right. and ask that we call the state and ask to stop taking care of it. Yeah. And I very, very strongly suggest we don't do that, but I got told to call them, so I did. And, <coughs> and then it's been our problem ever since. Mm -hmm. I talked to the supervisor of District 5 once, and he... <laughs> so your baby. Yep, so... So, it's ours. Which stinks, because it's going to be yeah. a problem forever. It's going to be a problem forever, yeah. Unless you trap them and trap them and trap them again. So, so. But, okay. Anything else? No? All right, I'm going to move as it. As long as it's being controlled, by the way, but somewhere where town property is not on private property. Oh, oh, we got to set up the work well, session. We've set it. We're just going to yeah. confirm. The work it. session, we're going to confirm. We're going to do the, the, the potential two non-public hires at 630 for the work session mm -hmm. that we agreed to. And then it's going to be what, Monday, next, Monday? next Monday for the work session. And then we'll... Um, DPW and yep, police, and the police chief. chief. And that was it. And that was it. We were going to lock it at that. Yep. Okay. And we'll probably start DPW so that can get finalized just in case yeah. police chief. Yeah. We haven't had got one all done start to finish yet. So. <laughs> no. Did well, yeah, we did. Oh, we answer. did hers. Yeah. 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 We just signed one. Come on. Give us a little credit. Well. Yeah. 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 Well, I think we had to finish DPW, which is what I meant by that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Now you can. Okay. Move to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Aye, aye. Of course. Right now, one second. Thanks for all your work, guys. We'll try.